Hello and welcome to the CISN Football Pregame Show. I am your host, Blake Walker. It is week two of the Iowa high school football season here in the CIML. We're excited to bring you tonight's episode just before getting you to our games of the week here on CISN. We got a lot to go over tonight. We got rankings, we got highlights of last week's games, we got coach interviews, more thoughts, and much more. Let's jump right into the highlights from our packed action of week one. The Waukee Warriors taking on the Ames Little Cyclones week one action. A lot of upside to this Waukee team. And how about starting out big? With a 7 0 lead, Beckett Baker, the sophomore quarterback, goes 57 yards to the end zone for a touchdown. Beckett was a freshman starter all last year. A lot of people thought, how big do we see the sophomore improve? And he improves greatly. Looking like Trevor Lawrence running out there. Scores the touchdown, gives Waukee a 14-0 over Ames. Later, Grant Gamble, one of the two running back duo between him and Niall Eddy in the backfield. Gamble breaks out and gets all the way inside the 10, down inside close to the 5. A couple plays later, Baker on a rollout, can use his legs, and then he can use his arm. He throws to the back of the end zone for a touchdown to Charlie Cross on the crossing pattern. A beautiful touchdown by the Warriors. Later, just before the end of the half, 21-7, Waukee on top. Baker throws it, tosses it up to Sage Yazzie for the touchdown. A nice floater. Waukee dominates 35-7. Beckett Baker, 228 total yards and four touchdowns. Ankeny versus Ankeny Centennial. The crosstown rival did not disappoint. An absolute barn burner. 10-0 Centennial leads. How about this bomb? 47-yard touchdown pass to Max Snyder. He finished with two touchdowns and 103 receiving yards. Centennial would go up 17-0, but Ankeny would crawl back. With two minutes to go in the fourth quarter, Larmy with a touchdown run right up the middle. Daniel punches the score in, and we are going to overtime at 24-all. What a game between these two. First play in overtime, it's Luke Anderson hitting Daniel Larmy again for a touchdown. Right inside the five, down to the goal line, Larmy gives Ankeny a 31-24 lead to get things going in overtime. Trenton Smith, though, would respond. QB sneak right back up the middle. We are tied at 31. All that means we're going to double overtime. In double overtime, on a second and long, Smith back to throw. Hits Chase Shuddy, the tight end, to the back of the end zone. His only catch of the night, and it gives Centennial the lead, 38-31. Ankeny has to score to respond. Take a look at the replay again. A beautiful ball by Smith, a beautiful catch by Chase Shuddy. How about that for Centennial? Ankeny on the ensuing drive. Anderson, first game as a starting quarterback, throws on the run to Evan Earlmeyer, and he makes the grab. Tough grab in the end zone for the touchdown. It's 38-37. Ankeny is going to have to kick to tie the game up. They kick it, and it bounces off the upright, but hold on. There is a flag on the play. Centennial jumps off sides. So then Ankeny says, you know what? We're just going to go for the win. They try to go for two, and Luke Anderson tosses a jump ball in the air. Double covered, Devin Akers makes the grab and scores the two-point conversion. Ankeny walks off crosstown rival Centennial. 39-38 to is your final score. What a game for the Battle of Ankeny. We're on to our rankings now. We're going to look at Cedar Rapids Gazette's rankings of Class 5A right now. Southeast Polk is the number one team in the Gazette's rankings after their win over Valley, 24-18. Dowling Catholic, number two after their win over Cedar Rapids Kennedy. Johnson holds on in a close one against Waukee Northwest. They are third. Valley, fourth after the loss to the Rams. Ankeny, up to fifth after their win over Ankeny Centennial. Lindmar comes in at number six. Cedar Rapids Prairie upset Cedar Falls. They jump to number seven. Cedar Rapids Kennedy lost a good game to Dowling. They are eighth and then tied for ninth. The Waukee Warriors, who defeated Ames, and Bettendorf, who took care of business against Pleasant Valley. That is your top ten rankings thanks to the Cedar Rapids Gazette. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with much more. You're watching the CISN Football Pre-Game Show. Let's face it, it's Iowa and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are going to get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same-day AC service appointments at the ready. 
We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, Westside Auto Pros. It's the DeArmond Ford Summer Sales Event. Ford F-150 XLT with 3.9% for 72 months plus 27.50 rebate. Flex by must trade for 95 or newer. Get 2.9% for 60 months on the new Ford Expedition. Explore and edge with additional bonus cash offers. And the all-electric Ford Mustang Mach-E with 3.9% for 72 months plus $2,000 bonus cash plus 90 days no payments. It's the Summer Sales Event at DeArmond Ford Indianola. DeArmondFord.com. For 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Spring will be here soon, and our selection of patio furniture is fantastic. But it won't be that way forever. If you want to get furniture for your deck this summer, come see us now. All the best brands and the best selection. And if you want a special order for this summer, we still have time to do that. Come see us now, Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Welcome back to the CISN Football Pre-Game Show. Blake Walker with you. Always appreciate having the ability to have the coaches talk with us, and that is exactly what we have here tonight, as Paul Yeager had a chance to sit down with Ankeny's head coach, Jeff Bauer. We are here in the pre-game show, Jeff Bauer. First win as a varsity head coach in football. Not your first win as a coach. You've coached a lot of youth. What was that experience like? You told me earlier in the week you had a chance to reflect. You deflected to the team, the coaching staff. But for you personally, it had to be a big relief off your shoulders. Yeah, I mean, especially knowing what the schedule was looking forward, you know, to get the first one. So, because obviously playing who we play this week and next week, and if you look at it, you know, you could have been over for quite some time. But it was, yeah, it's, I guess it's more relief because I know how hard our staff and our players work this summer and for it to pay off like that was very satisfying. And to get the, now they see an instant uh, reward for their work and now the expectation game changes for them because they change themselves like, you know what, maybe we can do this, maybe we can't. Do, have you seen that reflected in practice this week? Yeah, I think it is, uh, I mean, there is a comp more of a confidence, which is good. Is, there should be more of a confidence because uh, we're, we're talented. Uh, obviously, just inexperienced. So, uh, Last week, new quarterback. Uh, you mentioned the previous two starting quarterbacks maybe had a little struggle in their first game. Luke struggled in that first quarter, but, man, he really kind of came along in the second, third, fourth quarter. What do you think changed for him? He, uh, he's just – it's his demeanor. that He's kind of easygoing. He, does, he doesn't get too low. He won't get too high. That's a big attribute for a, you know, a starting quarterback, obviously. Offensive line, uh, how did you feel they were doing? Uh, I thought they played very good, um, which doesn't surprise me. They're a good bunch of guys that know what they're doing. They work at it. They study film. They're coached well with Coach White, Coach Kluver, and Coach Newell. So, uh, you know, they were in sync, and I expect them just to get better and better each week. Any other surprises on the offensive side of the ball? Uh, no, I mean, no surprises. I don't, you know, I knew Earl Meyer and Akers were going to be good. Daniel Army as a sophomore, I mean, 
I guess that maybe was a surprise to step up that, you know, 115, 120 mm -hmm. yards first time out, but that's not really a surprise to us either. Defensively, you you had high expectations for Dylan Doherty uh, to, in that position, uh, but Angela Wernow kind of really stood out to you. Why? Yes. Uh, I mean, he's, he's, he's a little undersized as a linebacker, but he's a senior and he just, I mean, he played with a purpose Friday night and made tons and tons of plays, took on blocks really well, filled outside, uh, had his gaps contained, which was very nice to see. But uh, as, as things go on and teams maybe focus on one player or the another, how important is it and what kind of conversations do you have with other guys to say, they may focus on him, you've got to step up? Yeah, I mean, we've obviously, you know, we lost our starting nose tackle with Brayden Carter last week. And it's, uh, it's been important for us. I, I mean, we have to, whether you're first or second team, everyone has to be ready to do mm -hmm. their job. You know, we had someone that was sick this week, and so we had uh, someone step up as a linebacker, you know, and, uh, it, you know, you just never know when your number's ready to be called. So. And tonight, what do you see as a key, um, knowing that this is a two-time defending champ that just seems to be big and physical and strong? They're the, they're, the, they're the ones with targets on their back right now, knowing their history. What do you, what's the message been this week? Uh, just to take care of what we do. Uh, you know, be fundamentally sound, make sure we take on the blocks correctly, make sure we tackle well, um, do what you're supposed to do. If you have a deep third, make sure you have the deep third. If you, you know, control this gap, uh, cut off this, you know, make sure you seal this block that way. If we do the things correctly, and correct the mistakes we made last week, I think, you know, I think we'll compete with these guys. What, as a team, do you subscribe to those cliches of week one to two biggest improvement? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I've told, I mean, I've told our team, good teams make huge improvements from mm -hmm. one to two, week one to week two. So uh, I think we're ready to go. We've had, you know, Tuesday was kind of a subdued practice. Wednesday we had a lot more emotion and uh, much more energy, which was good to see. How will we know in the stands watching how things are going well, other than the scoreboard, of course? <laughs> Uh, yeah, just hopefully it's a competitive game and you'll see that we're, you know, um, I expect us to do well on defense and offense, so, um, and special teams, so. Very good. All right. So, uh, head Hawk, Jeff Bauer, here as our pregame show continues on CISN. Thank you to the coaches, as always, that come out and reach out, and we talk to them every Friday for your CISN football pregame show. We appreciate all the insight. We'll be back with more. You're watching the CISN football pregame show. Let's face it, it's Iowa and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are going to get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same day AC service appointments at the ready. We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, Westside Auto Pros. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. New trucks are arriving daily during Schottenkirk Chevy's Truckload Kickoff Event. Over 1,200 vehicles. WaukeeChevy.com. Inventory changes hourly. Don't see exactly what you want? Build, price, and order direct from the factory. To better serve you, we double the size of our service department. We need more team members. Go to WaukeeChevy.com to see our job openings. The Truckload Kickoff Event. Find new roads to Schottenkirk Waukee Chevy. WaukeeChevy.com. For 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Spring will be here soon and our selection of patio furniture is fantastic. But it won't be that way forever. 
If you want to get furniture for your deck this summer, come see us now. All the best brands and the best selection. And if you want a special order for this summer, we still have time to do that. Come see us now. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Welcome back to the CI Sense Football pregame show. We're wrapping up our pregame coverage here before getting you to the big game. We got two big games on the Central Iowa Sports Network tonight, along with a couple other games we think you should keep an eye on across the state. Let's look at those right now. Starting off with Dowling Catholic versus Valley. Dowling versus Valley, the rivalry we all look forward to. Dowling coming off a win, Valley coming off a loss. If you remember, this game. Last time these two teams played was at the Unidome. Last November, Valley stunned Dowling Catholic late. 22-21 was the final score. Valley got away with the victory. Dowling will be looking for revenge. Ankeny versus Southeast Polk are, is our other game on the Central Iowa Sports Network tonight. Paul Yeager and company have the call for that one. Can Ankeny keep the momentum rolling after last week's thriller against Ankeny Centennial? And can Southeast Polk get off to another good start after the win over Valley last week. This game has always been a classic. Obviously, the state championship game a couple years ago uh, should be a very fun game at Ankeny Stadium. A couple other big games to keep an eye out for tonight. Waukee versus Waukee Northwest should be a great game between these two. The key to the city rivalry. They fight for a literal key to the city, a wooden key to the city. Excited to see those two teams square off. Johnston versus Cedar Falls should be a very fun game as well. Cedar Falls coming off a loss to Prairie. Johnston got a win over Waukee Northwest. Johnston got beat last year by Cedar Falls. We'll see if the Dragons have anything in store for them. Iowa City Liberty takes on Iowa City High, a classic rivalry, the Battle of Zeus. Last year was played at Kinnick Stadium. Liberty got the best of City High. Now Liberty jumps up to Class 5A. Both these two teams lost their Week 1 games, but should be ready to go on both sides of the ball. And then Iowa City West takes on Urbandale. Jayhawks trying to get back on track after a Week 1 loss to Indianola. Iowa City High and Jack Wallace looking really good to start the season. They'll look for a big victory tonight over the CIML Urbandale Jayhawks. That will wrap it up for us tonight here on the CISN Football Pregame Show. Should be two great games in front of us between Ankeny and Southeast Polk and Dowling Valley. Expect fireworks to go off once again tonight, and we look forward to seeing you next week back with us again on the CISN Football Pregame Show. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Enjoy your football Friday. I'm Blake Walker. We'll see you next week. School football Friday nights are for playing on the gridiron. The Ankeny Marching Band on the field right now. We just had our national anthem. We're about to have the two teams run out of the field because we are getting set for a fantastic game tonight. 1-0 Southeast Polk against 1-0 the Ankeny Hawks here from Ankeny Stadium. Good evening, everybody. Along with Tim Halber, I'm Paul Yeager. Austin Oliver will be this with us in just a moment. Tim, it's going to be extremely hard to top last week's game. Should we try? What, what a way to start out. You want triple <laughs> overtime this week? We weren't quite ready for that, but that was a, a fantastic game. That was just week one. Now we're into week two with two undefeated teams. You have the two-time defending champion, Southeast Polk Rams. Brad Zelenovich coming back to a school he coached at. He was here when the split happened. He's brought teams back before, but the champs here are a special squad. Every team's unique, but there's one key part right there. The quarterback has returned. Yes, yeah, so he mentioned that in the press conference earlier this week is that his quarterback, Moberly, uh, number five, will see him tonight, that he's an Iowa State commit, 6'4", 200-pound quarterback. Really, his leadership out there, he's a two-year starter. Last week, he hit seven different receivers in his offense, so the offense goes through. He does a very good job as a field general. There is Austin, or there is Moberly, Connor Moberly there in the uh, end zone in pregame warm-ups just a few minutes ago. You talk about experience. You heard Coach Zelenovitz say in those pregame conversations, Tim, about there's no substitution for experience. Why is that? 
Well, the offense goes through them. You can call the plays. He also settles down the entire offense. The receivers, though, they have confidence in the quarterback. The play's coming out, the timing. You don't get delay a game penalty. So having that quarterback knowing the offense, knowing what the coach is thinking, helps out quite a bit. One thing that Southeast Polk has been known for years is their great linebacker play. But this year they add fantastic defensive front line. This is a squad that really can play big boy football in a short amount of time. The phrase that Coach Zelenovich likes to use, we like to cause some chaos. What's that mean? They're going to cause some chaos. they got some very experienced people. They, they play a 4-2-5 defense, but they get a lot of looks. People that are Hawkeye fans are probably familiar with that 4-2 look in the front there. Four defensive linemen, two linebackers. He talked about denting the front. They have the, the guys that can do it. They play a lot in the backfield. So that blocking scheme, they do fill holes in the gaps quite well. You'll see a couple of big players that we will talk about a lot. As for the Ankeny Hawks, the play that you've probably watched on replay a couple of times if you're an Ankeny fan or maybe not if you're a Centennial fan was the final play in double overtime. This is a team that has that what I call the double OT swagger. Let's take a look at Luke Anderson here. He was a guy in his first varsity start. Did you see any nerves? At first, I think the first quarter he yes. did. I think it's his first start. And, and the coach was talking about the past quarterbacks, Jace Bauer, J, you know, J.J. Cole. These guys did not start, do very well their first game. He had some jitters. He had a first quarter interception. Came back through two touchdown passes and then hit a two-point conversion in double overtime to win the game. And there's a look at it again. 14 to 30 passing with just over 200 yards and a couple of touchdowns. It was Connor Kaiser who ran the ball in. A couple of those receivers that that Anderson found, Devin Akers. Coach Bauer called him a secret weapon, the secret's out. It is. You know, he said he grew up, he's like 6'6", growing still. Um, he only had three catches last week, but for 90 yards. He had huge impact plays during the backfield. Earl Meyer, I think he had six, carries, six catches for the game, so those two really expanded the offense and created that running game to come back and letting um, Laramie have a good game at running, running the ball. Coach Zelenovich says we know where Earl Meyer and Akers are going to be at any given time. There's a look at Evan Earl Meyer. He played a lot last year because of the injury to Devin Akers. He has only taken that opportunity and capitalized on it. Yes, he has. It's good to see two main receivers so they can't key on them. They, they spread the field with the wide sideline to sideline, but they also go, go deep. So they are quarterback's best friend, so that helped. But then Luke Anderson did a great job settling down Call him in the huddle. That's what the coach talked about. He's cool hand Luke in there. Offense ran through him and did a great job. There's a look at your Ankeny Hawks making their way from Northview Middle School across the street and uh, into their cove area. Cave? I don't know what you want to call it. They're about to take the field uh, on the northeast side of the stadium. Southeast Polk still in that tin shed as uh, Coach Lennon. goes, <laughs> they still have that thing? Yeah, a couple more years, Coach. Sorry about that. But uh, the Ankeny Hawks tonight, they'll be in there. Uh, what Coach Rick Nelson called them was victory gold. I guess I'm going to have to find out what Coach Bauer calls it. You know, if it works, it works. If they win tonight, they might keep victory gold. But, yeah, once again, you know, Ankeny Hawks tonight, they're at they're the home team, but they were home last week. They're just changing sidelines, get to be in the shade tonight versus last week. Not near the heat, but it isn't exactly cooler. It's 84 degrees right now. We'll get an, a weather report from Austin Oliver in just a moment. We'll see the Ankeny Hawks run out here onto the field, hopefully, before we go to break. They have one more hype video to do. You can experience it uh, if you're in the stadium watching. Yeah. When we come back, we'll have the coin toss and final comments, as well as our first field report from Austin, Austin Oliver. You're watching high school football here on CISN. The DeArmond Ford Summer Sales Event. Ford F-150 XLT with 3.9% for 72 months plus $27.50 rebate. Flex by must trade for 95 or newer. Get 2.9% for 60 months on the new Ford Expedition. Explore and edge with additional bonus cash offers. And the all-electric Ford Mustang Mach-E with 3.9% for 72 months plus $2,000 bonus cash plus 90 days no payments. It's the Summer Sales Event at DeArmond Ford Indianola. DeArmondFord.com. For 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. 
Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Spring will be here soon, and our selection of patio furniture is fantastic. But it won't be that way forever. If you want to get furniture for your deck this summer, come see us now. All the best brands and the best selection. And if you want a special order for this summer, we still have time to do that. Come see us now. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Let's face it, it's Iowa and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are going to get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same day AC service appointments at the ready. We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, Westside Auto Pros. Getting ready for kickoff here at Ankeny Stadium tonight, September 1, 2023, the first home game for the Ankeny Hawks. They played last week here against Centennial. The Hawks are making their way out to midfield, as are the Southeast Polk Rams. There's a look at their captains. They go Carter Peshek, Connor Moberly, as well as Caleb Chebuhar, Chebuhar. And then the Hawks have Connor Kaiser, Angela And the rest of the captains are out there right now. But let's go to Austin Oliver for our first in-game report. Let's check out down on the sideline. Not near as hot tonight, but Austin, I'm, I'm going to guess it's sneaky warm. It's it's uh, it's a little bit warm down here. I think both teams are pretty jazzed up. The uh, fans to be jazzed, seem to be pretty jazzed up. I think the one factor we could have is that wind is, I'm down here in the north end zone, and it, the wind is coming right at me. So uh, that could be a factor here, especially in the first quarter, while teams get used to that uh, breeze coming at them or at their back. All right, Austin, you had a chance to kind of watch a little bit of the warm-ups from the two teams that were out there. Any noticeable difference in maybe intensity or body language that you saw? Well, I think both of them look pretty cool, calm, and collected. So uh, I'm, I'm excited to see this uh, get going, and I think we're going to have some fireworks right away, hopefully. So both teams look ready to go. All right, Austin Oliver, thank you so very much. Uh, Tim Halber, you see we get ready for kickoff. What do you see as keys in this game if you were the visiting Southeast Polk Rams? Uh, handling that 3-3-5 that three, three, defense that Anki's going to throw at you is very disruptive. They have to get their keys down there. So can they find that balanced offense with that two running back attack? For Ankeny. Quite the same way. They, Coach talked about they made a lot of mistakes last week, overcame them to win, not have the mistakes early on in the game and get that big of a hole because I don't think they can come back from 17 down this week against the Southeast Polk team. The Rams have been good for a number of years. It is a lot of plug-and-play. Guys are in new positions. We haven't even talked about the guys that aren't here anymore for Southeast Polk, but have absolutely cast a big shadow over this program. I'm thinking of Xavier Wampa, who will likely start for Iowa tomorrow. Caden Proctor, who's going to get significant time as a freshman in Alabama. You look at uh, Sama, Abu Sama. I mean, they had three incredible players, Sama up at Iowa State, who might see time tomorrow in that contest. When you have three guys like that no longer in your program, you had guys that could learn from them. You think the lesson is school is open? School is open, but they know that people are looking at them, that they too can be that kind of player that maybe next year in two years they'll be at one of those uh, big stadium schools here playing on Saturday. Sam Zelenovich and Carson Robbins back deep for, uh, for Southeast Polk. The Yankee Hawks in their gold getting ready to kick it off is Ryan Harrington in the gold uniforms with the white helmets. At 7 o'clock, we are underway. High end over end kick is going to take Zelenovic all the way back into the end zone, and that is where it'll be a touchback, and the Southeast Polk Rams will come out first. They'll bring out Connor Moberly, a quarterback, Carson Robbins, Jack Falloon, and Sam Zelenovic at wide receiver. C.J. Phillip at running back. Up in the tight end position, Braden Lundgren up front. Carson Campisi, Gavin Douglas, Parker Strong, and Braden Harmon. They come out, and they'll be in that pistol formation. You'll see a lot of Moberly in the gun. He's got Phillip next to him. Phillip last week 
One touchdown on 18 carries and 81 yards. The transfer from Dowling Catholic getting a chance to play. First play from scrimmage here for the Rams. It's going to be Phillip up the middle, and he is going to be stood up right away by the Yankee defense right there. Dylan Doherty and also Leo Aguirre, their first for the Hawks. The stunt up there. We had Samuel Z on one side there with Wernow. Wernow had a big game last week. Six tackles, three and a half tackles for loss last week against Centennial. No gain on the play, loss a half a yard. Moberly on second down and long. It's a play, it's a pass, and it's caught by Zelenovich near the 28-yard line where he is put out of bounds. Samuel Sandvig and Jacob Moorfeld. Moorfeld, the returning starter back there, trying to offer some experience. It's third and short for the Rams. Here comes some pressure by the Hawks. They jump on sound, and that is going to be a penalty, most likely, unless an offensive player moved that we didn't see. Ankeny coaches, of course, pointing against Southeast Polk, but I think it's going to go against the defense. Look at the linebacker. Might have come across. Nope, they're calling against Southeast Polk. The lineman might have flinched, causing Samuel Z to, to take the shot through the A-gap. I wasn't going to say Samuel's name until he was off the hook, but yes, he was the one that had jumped across the line. Hey, hello to Samuel's family in Oregon that were watching last week in this contest. And Glad to have you wherever you may be around the world watching us tonight here. It's now third and long, third and six for Southeast Polk, 11-22. Home fans on beach night make a little bit of noise here in front of us to our left. Two receivers to the right for Moberly. It's a pass situation. He looks into the sun. He's flushed. Kaiser gives chase. Kaiser gets the shoestrings. Moberly gets away with it. Incomplete, out of bounds. It would have been short. Jack Balloon, the intended receiver, three and out for Southeast Polk to start the game. Upabi there on the rush, got up there, flushed the quarterback out of the, out of the pocket. We're now closing fast. All that uh, Moberly could do is throw a sideline pass, at least make it incomplete. But the penalty played big, getting a three and out here on the uh, for the Yankee Hawks. But special teams have been, it were an issue in the first quarter last week for Ankeny. Let's see if they can stay on their side of the ball here at fourth and six. Southeast poke to punt short, but then gain some good height. Coming in to grab it just on the north side of midfield is Kinnick Voss. And it'll be a change of possessions now. Here come the Ankeny Hawks with Luke Anderson, Daniel Larmy, Caden Hankus, Devin Akers, Evan Erlmeyer and Carson Sommerfeld. Up front, Evan Spence, Jack Dorfler, A.J. Heck, Tristan Mullis, and Lucas B. Roth. Four up front for Southeast Polk, Tim. Got to watch this front line. Draven Woods, number zero, Tavian Collins, Cooper Martinson, and Bryce Bolio. The Hawks bring four receivers to the near side on this first possession, one receiver to the right. Anderson in the backfield all by himself. In motion, and then it's thrown out to Hankus, who is hit at about the 45-yard line after a gain. Trayton Nave on the tackle there. Also for Southeast Polk, Trey Lust was in the neighborhood. And no huddle for the Hawks. Trying to keep that defense in their base formation. Pickup of three on the play. Second down play action. They go. It's caught and near a first down for the Hawks is Caden Hankus. He gets near the sticks. And he is tackled by Trey Lust, the senior defensive back who stands 6'3", 205 pounds. Again, no huddle for the Hawks. Look at the sideline picking up the play. Look at that formation. They found something to the outside, not trying to run in the interior of that Southeast Polk defense. Third and short. Hankus goes in motion. They give it to him on the jet sweep. Comes around near side. He is going to be pulled down behind the line of scrimmage. Davian, Dravian Woods makes a great defensive play. I've been told he's one of the best defensive players in 5A this year. Showed it on that one. He is 6'3", 225 pound defensive and captain of the football team. He had a tackle for loss last week, and there's this first one. His first tackle tonight was for a loss, so the offense stays out there on a fourth and five or fourth and four. From the 42-yard line on the north side of the field. 
Anderson with time. Given chase, throws it to a wide open. Devin Akers caught at the 35 yard line before he is shoved out of bounds. Mandy Gale in the coverage out there, giving a little too much of a cushion for Akers out there. Akers runs great routes, came back for the ball. You always with receivers coming back, helping your quarterback out. Manny Gay, the tackle, move the chains. Hawks pick up and convert. First down, Anderson, down the right side. He's got a man. He's got Hankus. It's caught, but he's out of bounds. Had it for a moment. Incomplete. Not quite the play last night in that uh, Nebraska-Minnesota game no. where the receiver drugged that right foot in for the score. He tried. He had to do a, a 180 out there. The ball was a little bit, you know, back shoulder throw, turned around. He had beat his coverage there. Got a step on him. Incomplete. The Hawks actually have a little bit of a breath. They look to Brady Walls on the sideline, looks at his play sheet, signals with his hands and fingers. I think my stats, I think he's three or four or four or five passing already. This is the air attack by the Ankeny Hawks in, in his first quarter. Yet to see Larmy get a carry. First carry, he is stopped all the way back. Basically, Caleb Chebahar made a great, he saw something because nobody makes a great stop like that unless they saw something. Great linebacker, three-year starter at linebacker for for Southeast Bull comes into that interior line, you know, Tiffany Collins. Cooper Martinson is also a, a really good defensive tackle. Plays nose guard quite a bit in the defense, occupying that center. So that middle of the field is a tough blocking assignment for the Hawks. Loss on the play makes it third and 15 from the 38. The Hawks look to throw the football again. They're in a bunch formation with only Larmy to the left of Anderson. Passing situation. Anderson throws it to Earl Meyer, who is absolutely drilled the moment he catches the football. Caden Hills delivered a big time shot well short of the first down. So now you're in that no man's land near the 34 yard line, fourth down. You could punt, try to pin him down there, or go for it. And they're going to go for it on a fourth and 11. So I think Ankeny was thinking two plays there, but they would have maybe liked to pick up more than four on that last play. Three receivers to the left, two to the right for Anderson. Calls for it, looks to the right, throws to the right, down the end zone. He's got a man, it is caught. You can guess the name, Devin Akers, 34-yard score for the Hawks. And he beat a double coverage there. He had threw it over the top there. Akers had got a step behind him, then plus being 6'6", reached up, does a great job of catching it at the point of the top point of the ball, pulled her in in the end zone for the first touchdown on here's, a fourth and 11. Here's the replay down the right sideline. He got behind the two defenders, and I'm going to guess they talked about trying to keep Akers in front of you the entire time this week in practice. On to attempt the extra point, Ryan Harrington out of the hold of Jet Each. The kick is up, and it is good. Hawks lead 7 0 at the 803 mark here from Ankeny Stadium. Six. Let's face it, it's Iowa and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are going to get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same day AC service appointments at the ready. We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, West Side Auto Pros. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Devin Akers only had to wait a couple of minutes to get his first touchdown of this contest as the Ankeny Hawks go eight plays, 48 yards, two fourth down conversions. And the Hawks take a 7-0 lead at 8.03. In to kick it off is Ryan Harrington again. He's going to send it over the head of Sam Zelenovich. We go down to Austin Oliver for our first in-game check-in with Austin. What do you know down there? Well, I was just uh, taking a look down here on the field. That's a little bit more apparent, but uh, 18 and 11 for Ankeny have sizable like uh, height advantages over those corners that uh, Southeast Polk is putting out there. And I think on on a, a couple of those plays, it came in to be a major factor, especially on the touchdown. So I'll, uh, I'll look to see that for the rest of the night. Uh, it's pretty apparent down here in the field that they got advantage on the outside and just that height realm. 
Austin Oliver, thank you very much for that in-game report. Here we go, Ankeny on defense now. They have a little bit of swagger as they come to the line, but Southeast Polk has the experience. They went three and out on their last possession. Moberly with Phillip in the back. Play action, here comes Wernow, and Wernow is gonna miss, and Moberly is gonna run, gets it away, and there's no one home on the outside. He is a smart guy right there, throwing the football away, lived to play another day, but he should have been tackled back down at the 10. Wernow's gonna be thinking about that when he sees the film and think about it tonight, tomorrow, but he had him in his grasp. Good mobility by, by Moberly got out there, but also good rushing out there on the outside. Overball came in on the rush. Wernow is the guy a lot of people talked about as having such an outstanding game. Number seven, he's lined up on the left side of the formation right now. Moberly with time on the screen. They get it to Phillip and it's dropped. I think Ankeny had that one read to an extent. They had three guys rushing and there were three guys back deep. How do you pick up a screen, Tim? See what the linemen are doing. If the linemen peel off, they, aren't, they don't fire out, they don't block you, they kind of give you a little hand check. That's the first sign for one of the defensive linemen generally stay back. They have screen responsibility, and then you float out there with the linemen, causing some disruption. But what it creates now is a third and ten. Coach Zelenovich said it was key for them to stay ahead of the chains. They are way behind right now, third and ten from their own 20. Moberly gets rid of it, outside, caught, and near the stick and on the dive. It's ever so close, but I think Carson Robbins is going to be short. By about a yard on the coverage, Kinnick Voss. And boy, Coach Zelenovich is pleading his case on the dive. I guess he came sliding out. You know, he was reaching forward, but his knee came down one yard short of the 30-yard line. Moberly's going to go under center to get the one yard. He gets the push from behind, and he'll get it. First down and convert. Good back push from Thaden Abbas. First down, And also those big guys up front of Campisi, Douglas, Strong, Harmon, and Blackford. I've been told <laughs> this offensive line of Southeast Polk can really push them around. You tell me what you see. First well, your smallest guy is 265. <laughs> yes, they can do that. Moberly on first down, surveys the situation, gives it to Phillip, who darts to the line of scrimmage and doesn't get much further before Kingston Upabi makes the tackle. Nice job by Upabi getting in there. Upabi. Keep it, keeping the outside, you know, pushed in there, not getting blown out, keeping the hole down. Gain of hope, hope his linebackers come in. Gain of four on the play. Ball at the 35-yard line. Play clock down to 15. 6.55 to go first quarter. Ankeny seven, southeast poke nothing. Two receivers to the near side, one to the left. C.J. Phillip to the left side of Moberly. Play action, they go, caught by Zelenovich, midfield and then some. Kinnick Voss, the shoestring tackle, and if Voss doesn't make that stop, that could be six. Zelenovich, you know, six foot two junior receiver, burst on there right over the, right in front of the safety. Uh, touchdown saving tackle by Voss. Had him by the shoestring, dropped him down there, but what a quick release by Connor Moberly, throwing it down the center of the field. The slant is so hard to defend. First and 10 for the Rams from the 48 of Ankeny. In motion goes Braden Lundgren. They're gonna pass down the near side deep. They've got a guy, they've got Robbins, it's caught! And he's inbounds at the 20. Perfect back shoulder fade. He went down there, had his man by a step, turned around, came back slightly on that outside shoulder, caught it first down. Perfect pass by Moberly to Robbins. Let's watch the contact. Jacob Moorfeld making a case to the officials of a push off there. But that's just a play where, again, uh, Austin talked about the speed. It's like Southeast Polk is getting now behind the Ankeny defense as the Rams look to take a few more deeper shots. Moberly to throw again. Throws towards the end zone. Zelenovich wide open in the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown. Made it look easy. Funny gap in there, you know, over the corner. The safety didn't get over there quick enough for the help. The little Z out, you know, a little flag route from the outside there. Wide open. Then Mobley had time to throw the ball. Found him. Touchdown. 
Pass, pass, and more pass. Hunter Chanthapon on to attempt the extra point for the Rams. His kick is good. We're tied at seven. 5.48 to play from Ankeny Stadium. Let's face it, it's Iowa and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are going to get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same day AC service appointments at the ready. We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, Westside Auto Pros. New trucks are arriving daily during Schottenkirk Chevy's truckload kickoff event. Over 1,200 vehicles. WaukeeChevy.com. Inventory changes hourly. Don't see exactly what you want? Build price and order direct from the factory. To better serve you, we've doubled the size of our service department. We need more team members. Go to WaukeeChevy.com to see our job openings. The truckload kickoff event. Find new roads to Schottenkirk, WaukeeChevy. WaukeeChevy. Who's back deep for Larmy, Larmy and Hankus? Larmy and Hankus back deep for yep. Ankeny here. 7-7 seven, seven is our score. Pretty good start so far. Ankeny scored on their first possession. It took the Rams their second before they scored. Before the kick, we have a whistle. So to me says we weren't ready to go. It was the referee Craig Van Ark who threw the flag. Let's listen in for his call. Illegal procedure on the kicking team. We must have four members on either side of the kicker at the time of the kick. The five yard penalty for the kick. Alright, so Hunter Chanthaphon is going to kick it five yards back. He didn't have four guys on either side. Is that what he said? Yeah, I think he had, he had unbalanced. By the time he came from his position, it offset the the side closest to us, so he had fewer guys. It's like, so you can't overload one side of the kicker versus the other. Hankus and Larmy back deep at the 10, but if the first kick is any indication, this one's going to be taken more by the up men who are standing at about the 30. Last week, Centennial tried that short little pop-up, and it worked. Let's see if the Rams do the same thing. No, a good Line kick taken at the 25-yard line. And up to about the 35. On the return for Ankeny, it is Nathan Richmond. Let's go down to Austin Oliver for his uh, in-game checkup after that score. Austin? Well, I was just going to call out that, uh, as the kids would say, he threw about three dimes on that last drive. That third and uh, ten to the outside was a beautiful throw, and then the two deep balls were just gorgeous. Uh, just a different kind of ball that he's thrown out there and uh, looks really good from down here on the field. Rams, 83 yards passing on the contest. They, they went eight plays, 80 yards on that touchdown drive. Larmy gets the call. He goes up the middle. And again, Dra Draven Woods, the tackle. I think Draven Woods is in on every play. One thing about Larmy that Coach Bauer said this week is like, hey, he had a couple of plays where the play was in the middle, and he took it out. Let's see if Larmy runs a little more in as this game goes on. Gain of two on the play. Larmy play action. Now Anderson rolls out. He's got a couple of white shirts, throws it, caught. Devin Akers takes a shot right at that moment. Trey Lust and Carter Peshett combined for the tackle, and it is enough for a first down, but we do have a penalty flag back at the 40. We have had a uh, motion. Oh, the ineligible player downfield, Lucas B. Roth, whistled there. And usually, what happens is that Lucas is looking at the lineman is looking at something they have to block. The line, the defensive lineman backs up, oh. and you keep chasing him downfield. Then you go past the line of scrimmage, and they typically get caught that way. He was probably chasing his blocking assignment. He was, yeah, that, that good replay there, Randy, on getting that one in. So now it's second and 13 from the 32. Anderson fakes to the right, goes to the or left. Now it's Erlmeyer, puts one good move on, gets a few yards back up to about the 38-yard line before Caleb Chebahar right takes him out of bounds. Good job there, cutting that distance in half, you know, getting there into a third and nine, better than the uh, second and 15 that they had, so it opens up a little more 
something across. The crossing route in the middle has been open. There's only one safety deep for Southeast Polk. Third and nine. Anderson throws Larmy back shoulder, caught at the 45 near midfield. And I believe he'll get the first down by about a yard and a half. Chebahar again makes the stop for Southeast Polk. So there's a new wrinkle. Yeah, Larmy go out there playing more of a slot, slot back, not in the backfield, the empty backfield right now. Anderson again, this time Earlmeyer near side, and he's again popped on that far sideline. Caden Hills makes the tackle. Also in the neighborhood was Kale Winjet. One thing Luke Anderson talked about was the blocking that Larmy did last week and to protect him when he's in the pocket. Second and five. Five minutes to play here in the first quarter. Tied up at seven. Anderson steps under, has some room, but he's going to take it and take a shot right at about the 49-yard line. For the Rams, Mason Vanderbrink, the senior 6'3", 230-pounder, makes the tackle. Gain of what, a yard? No, that stick, far side stick makes, look like no gain. Driven Woods closing in quickly. Three receivers to the right. Anderson, the long snap count. Checks hard, now Akers comes near side a little further. Into possibly a different play, now joining him is Earl Meyer. Earl Meyer sets at the stick, Anderson runs out of time, passes tipped at the line. You guessed it, Draven Woods gets his hands on that one. Woods is as good as advertised. The only thing about him that uh, what coaches say is it's his size. Cause I'm like, where's this guy going in the next level? They said, just small. But we've seen it before, Tim, where guys who might be undersized get a chance, they perform well. You might look at, you could, could be a linebacker. Now 6'3 at 225, I, get a, I would believe he's going to grow. So he may find himself still on the defensive line, but he gets off his blockers quickly. And he goes back to catch punts. Draven Woods, back at the near side, but it's gonna be taken by Carson Robbins at the 18. He's got a seam down the left side. Still on his feet, 40, 45 before he's wrestled down by the Hawks. Manning Allen, huge return. Outside contain came in a little too close to the hash marks, letting him bounce outside, creating a lane out there that he was picking up an extra 10, 15 yards on that return. But block out there, and the old Carter Peshek put his hands in the air of, I didn't do anything, and it, but the replay shows he didn't. So the Rams will take over first and 10 from their own 47 yard line. Tied at seven with 4.36 to play first quarter. Play action. They go pass again. Gets behind Voss, who's not turned around, and will draw the flag on the pass to Sam Zelenovich. And those back shoulder passes like that, where the receiver turns around to try to catch the ball, they're, they're exposing themselves. They look like incidental, but they're going to call the pass interference on Voss. For not turning around. Coach is on negative side, not happy with that call that he was holding his position. Dowling leads Valley 7 0 in the first quarter over on the other game on CISN tonight as we take a look at that replay. Rams have only had six yards of rushing offense, 83 passing, total of 89. They get a bunch on the penalty right there. They go Phillip with the handoff. He's hit and goes down pretty much right away. Connor Kaiser. They're moving Kaiser around. They have yes, and plays in the middle. He's lined up at the end. I'm seeing we're now as quick as he is. You know, he's not. He's 5'8", 167, but he plays a lot bigger has been rushing a lot from his lineback, outside linebacker position. Pickup of three, second and seven. Phillip empties out the backfield and comes to the wide side of the field here to the near part. They look and throw that way and it's caught by Carter Robbins at the 25 yard line. That's gonna be good enough for the first down. Nolan Dalton there. Massively to Carson Robbins. For the tackle. 
a quick look in there you know, between the two safeties, between Nolan Dalton and look like Sandvik in there, but they're looking good quick pass. Mobley is on target here this first quarter. Kaiser now moves to the right, almost like defensive end spot. Defensive line almost jumps. Kaiser makes a call here to counter whatever it is he thinks the Rams are going to do. Play clock down to five. Moberly barks it out, gets in position. Three seconds, two, snaps it away. Now they give it to Phillip, who is hit initially and then makes a guy miss and gets to the outside. Nolan Dalton is going to rip and then finally finishing him off is Dalton. Nolan Dalton there makes the tackle. But that's the play if you're Ankeny, Tim. Should have been back at the, about the 22. Yeah, uh, Samuel Z and, and Westheimer were in the in the backfield, but you got to got to wrap them up. C.J. Phillips did a, a great job of cutting, going back, finding the outside, bouncing it to the outside, but should have been stopped for no gain or possibly a loss in the backfield. Second and seven for the Rams. Phillip into the middle of the scrum. Gets close to the stick. I think he probably has it. I think that was the right foot mark going down. He's got the first down. Leo Aguirre makes the tackle. A little bit longer drive here. I see that Ankeny is replacing a lot of their defense. Let me to rotate them quite a bit. Still warm down there on the field. Keep them fresh. A little bit longer sustained drive by the Rams on this, this end of the field. Two receivers to the left and right for Moberly. Has time. Throws to the end zone. Tipped. Nearly picked off. Sandvik Sam right there. Sam Sandvik there. Had his hands on it. It was a little under a throw, and Sandvik read it perfectly out there. Cut it. I think he's looking to hopefully intercept it and come down to the end zone for a touchback. But good defensive play there. They're well covered for the receivers as they run two unders and they run someone deep to see if they can stretch that defense out. So now they've got a second and ten at the 15. You tell the intended receiver. Phillip, also in the backfield, is the tight end Lundgren to that wing position. They go Phillip underneath. Cuts it back up in the middle. Still on his feet. Spins and wrestled down finally inside the five. But that is going to be a 10-yard gain and enough for a first down. Phillip running extremely hard here in this uh, latter part of the first quarter. You're seeing, you know, you know, Parker Strong in there. Big offensive lineman. Harbin on that side of the line. The tight end lining up there, Lundgren. Creates a lot of blocking. Lundgren's not small at 215 as a tight end. First and goal from the five. Minute 30 to play. Moberly. Now Phillip spins around one. Wernow grabs him, but not before about a gain of one, maybe two. Also a Gire in there as well. Upabe had him in the back foot, had his hands on him, but he spun just to get out of his grip, but then he was tackled immediately, so only a gain of one. See if they want to use that big offensive line to their advantage. They'd run the ball in to bring in Abbas as a 200-pound fullback in the backfield there as a blocking back. Second and goal from the four. Phillip has stood up right away. Leo Aguirre. Aguirre had a game of his... It was nice last weekend coming in the backfield. as a big stop there, closed the gap. There was no place for Phillip to run. Knocked it back for a two-yard loss, and now it brings up third and goal. Well, they gave him a one-yard loss. Third and goal for the five. Aguirre just blew up Abbas on that play. As you see the replay. So whenever the Rams put the ball in the air, they've had good success tonight. Look for them to throw here on third down. Zelenovic goes in motion. Whistle, timeout, Southeast Polk. Ten I seconds know. to go in the quarter. We'll step away for a moment. We're tied at seven here at Ankeny Stadium. Hi, 
Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Spring will be here soon, and our selection of patio furniture is fantastic. It won't be that way forever. If you want to get furniture for your deck this summer, come see us now. All the best brands and the best selection. And if you want a special order for this summer, we still have time to do that. Come see us now. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Over 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Southeast Polk on the timeout. We'll have 10 seconds and a third and goal from the five. Other scores tonight. Dowling leads Valley 7-0. No score between Waukee and Northwest, the first time those two teams have played in football. Centennial leads Ames 7 0. Here it's 7 7. Rams out of the timeout, send two receivers to the right. Hawks look to be in a man coverage situation here. Phillip next to Moberly. Phillip, play action now. It's going to be kept by Moberly. He's a race to the pylon. He is in there. Touchdown! Use Connor Moberly puts it on the ground and runs it in himself, and the Rams take their first lead of the game. Used all that six foot four frame to stretch out there and catch the pylon coming in. Good play fake there to Philip into the line, took a step, but then ran to the outside, scoring the touchdown. The ends got to watch that. You always, you don't think the quarterback's going to run; it's going to be a running play, but you got to always make sure the quarterback does not have the ball before you collapse on that running back. The extra point is good. And the Rams take a 14-7 lead on that play. So if, if you look back at that touchdown again, it was a good seal on that outside, Tim, as uh, Upabi kind of got, look him on the left side. He's wearing 87 tonight. He's coming down, and then he just gets taken out. But beyond the play, great effort there by Dorty. Haven't said Dylan's name yet tonight. You think Southeast Polk's been accounting for him a little bit? I think they have been. It's been a, been a good job. It's a good defensive effort, but you got to watch your keys on there, and even they're running the ball. You just got to get, get off your block quicker and set that edge. It's apparently beach night for both teams as the Southeast Polk fans are in their beach wear. Where's your uh, beach wear, Tim? Did you leave it it's best there? if I'm wearing long sleeve shirts. Okay, fair enough. You're all tatted up. Yes. Your sleeves. Rams take a 14-7 lead on a drive. It started with a very good punt return. And I can hear the, uh, the defensive crew getting some coaching. High kick. Hankus at the 10. At the 20, tries to get to the outside. He's got some room. 30, 35, 40, 45, midfield. Spins back around, still on his feet. Caden Hankus all the way down to the 46-yard line. However, hold the phone. Penalty flag lays back at the 29-yard line. Kale Winjet finally pushed out Hankus. I have a feeling all that talking is going to be for naught. I don't think it just fell. I think it's probably usually you know, guys you would cut across the field like that with the hands. Yep. Lock in the back. You don't have to hit him hard. You just got to basically touch him in the back and change someone's direction when they're running up the field. So, All right, Austin Oliver, we'll check in with you right now for a report. What do you know? Well, I'll tell you what, championship drive by a championship team there. Just uh, went down the field methodically and just put it in the ten, in the, to the end zone. So nice drive by the, the Rams. Nine plays, 54 yards, ends in a touchdown, took up 432 on the clock. And now it is Ankeny football with, uh, well, that ends the first quarter. We'll step away the first quarter, 14-7 Southeast Pope. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. 
Do you know what the best part about being a dog is? You can hear disaster before it even happens. You know what they say about disaster. Sometimes it can inspire a symphony. An honest day's work deserves an honest day's treat. No extra charge. And that is why we choose Honest Wrenches. No extra charge. And it's how service should Hawks will now go from north to south, left to right as you watch here on the internet. 14-7, Southeast Polk leads Ankeny. Daniel Larmy gets the call right up the gut, gets a couple of tough yards. After the penalty, it took Ankeny all the way back to the 15-yard line. Tackle made by Kale Winjet. Good block up there. Dorfler coming across, moving the pile back a little bit. Second and seven, Larmy gets to the outside, cuts over, hops over. Traven, Trayton Nave, and I want to say Woods was also maybe had a hand on that. Hawks Something goes on Sung is Uruma are in the block there to spring him. Anderson puts his head down and tries to get there. He has got to get to the 25. I think it was the third and then fourth effort, but man, Anderson looked like he was stood straight up. If the lineman puts his right foot down, I think he's got it. If he puts his left foot down to mark the ball, he's short. Ball's by the 30, 25 yard yep. line. That's the Hawk. First down. They do move the chain, so the Hawks have it. First and 10 from their own 25. Anderson, three receivers left, two to the right. Anderson, quick throw. The guy was covered. Throws it away. Tried to go to Sommerfeld. I've got to, I think that was Woods that ate that play up. If it wasn't Woods, it was uh, Bryce Bolio was right there at Larmy and Anderson, good decision not to throw that one, but that was clearly a busted play. Yeah, when the ends know that's coming, that little bubble screen on the short side of the field there, but if um, they could have gone out, if um, Summerfield could have gone downfield a bit, he'd been wide open down that sideline. So Larmy goes to the left side of Anderson now, second and ten. In motion, Hankus, and before the snap, a whistle. It's going to be a penalty. Ankeny's just a little bit out of sort. Not quite all sand in the gears. Couple of, couple of special teams plays here that we saw earlier, Tim. That play right there. They talk about those little mistakes. It's a mental mistake, and they're still learning how to play. That you know, get your confidence back. They're trying hard, but they're doing trying. To, you don't do too much. Play within yourself. Like they did that first drive that they had during the game. They played within themselves and, and moved down the field. Second and fifteen. Larmy, the handoff, stops and then is stood up at about the 21, maybe the 22. Trayton Nave and Caleb Chebahar, right both now, there. Nave really came up from the safety spot. They run three safeties, so sometimes it's Nave or it's going to be Peshek who come in. They're going to be the Hawk or that Rover safety that's going to come up there at the line of scrimmage. Hawks are having a hard time running the football tonight. Against Southeast Polk, let's see what they do on third and long. Third and 13 from their own 22-yard line. Hawks have got to be a little conservative here. They throw and it's blocked, tip, and picked up by Larmy. But guess who got it first was Draven Woods on the tip. And then Larmy catches it. He really had no choice because if he doesn't catch it, that's an INT. Yeah, but Woods had his, he has hands all over it. You know, I don't sure if he got his hand on it there. Was coming through up the middle. Cooper Martinson, that the nose tackle, came in, had a lot of push, came in, came around the, the center of the A-gap, putting a lot of pressure up the middle. Anderson's throwing off his back foot, can't get anything on it. Harrington punts from five yards deep in his end zone. Good field position ahead for Southeast Polk as Robbins calls for a fair catch at the 35-yard line. As we're starting to see now if Southeast Polk, how for real they really are right now, Tim. Short field, Ankeny comes off three and out, defense is going to be tired. Whatever cliche do you want to throw in here? Uh, I'd say I I'm, I'm, would be surprised if Moberly, as good as passing has been there on the outside, that he just didn't try to go for the jugular. You're up by, by seven right now. They doesn't go on the short side of the field. Take a shot to the end zone right away. They haven't run the ball. They're going to pass anyway. So we haven't seen anything from Falloon out there. He's on the field, but he had four receptions last week. And so see if they 
We extend the play. Falloon and Robbins come to the near side. Hand off, they go play action. Anderson goes deep for the end zone. He's got a man right there. It's caught at the five, rolling all the way down to the one. Sam Zelenovich. He's been open on that play. Here it is again, running the post with time. He's getting out there. He's taking the corner with it, but the safety isn't getting deep enough on that play. They're taking a shot down there. The safety is coming up at they're stopping at 10, 15 yards, and their the receivers are running 20-yard routes. Pick up of 33 on that play. Handoff Southeast poke the right side. Walking into the end zone is going to be Landon Vanderwerth. And that's a Southeast poke touchdown. Two-yard score for the Rams. That, that play action or that, that handoff there, the defense is going to freeze Ooh. just because Moberly ran it last time. Call that play Moses. The extra point is up, and it is good. Rams 21, Hawks 7, 9.52 to play here in the second quarter. 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. It's the DeArmond Ford Summer Sales Event. Ford F-150 XLT with 3.9% for 72 months plus 27.50 rebate. Flex by must trade for 95 or newer. Get 2.9% for 60 months on the new Ford Expedition. Explore and edge with additional bonus cash offers. And the all-electric Ford Mustang Mach-E with 3.9% for 72 months plus $2,000 bonus cash plus 90 days no payments. It's the Summer Sales Event at DeArmond Ford Indianola. DeArmondFord.com. Rams on a short field goal, two plays, 35 yards, and a score. Only took them 24 seconds on a Vanderwerf two-yard touchdown run. So now three different Rams have scored. Zelenovich, Moberly, and Vanderwerf. Balanced attack. As Chanthafon puts the leg into it, and that is going to be a touchback. Austin Oliver is underneath that uh, goalpost on the north end where they're doing work on the uh, soon-to-be locker room, but... Austin, the wind has gone away. What else can we talk about? I'll Not tell you much else. Yeah, very uh, apparent why this uh, quarterback's going to be playing at the next level. Just uh, systematically just moving it down the field. Kind of just conducting that offense is uh, about as good as you can get right now. Moberly's just looking really, really strong right now. Uh, Austin, real quick, do you see the defense looking a little tired yet for Ankeny? I, I definitely think so. They they don't know where to go. You know, there's, there's just so many options on here right now with the pass and the run. Uh, Kind of equally doing some work here, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, definitely a work in progress on the defensive side for sure. Catch made by Evan Earlmeyer up to about That's the 22 the yard line. Trayton Nave. Run down by Gay. And boy, even that's hard to, even passing is not getting much more than running right now for Ankeny. Second and seven. So they'll give him three. Larmy is quickly wrapped up, Trayton Nave again. I think they're going to have to make an adjustment well, on offense because Mave is oh, out there making tackles on the outside. He's coming in, well, pinching it down eight. and catching the running back in the backfield. So they're going to have to look to see where he is and read him off the play to get something going, to get something a little more downfield than things that happen at the line of scrimmage. Third and six, nine minutes to play. The Hawks need to get some positive momentum on this drive. Anderson, play action. Clock expires because you know who, Draven Woods, gets to do a little sack dance. Also, Cooper Martinson. Cooper Martinson. That's his second tackle for loss out there for Draven Woods. Yeah, he just... Absolutely, Woods just got right on by his guy. Nave also in there. Fourth and 10, loss of six on the play. 
On to punt again is Harrington. Gets his leg into it. Woods calls for the fair catch. It's going to take an Ankeny Hawk bounce for a moment. And then, of course, <laughs> if you're Ankeny, it goes the wrong way. Samuel Z falls on it at the 49-yard line. 8-10 to go two. here in the second quarter. Coming up at halftime, we're going to be talking volleyball with the new Ankeny head volleyball coach, Liz Bedke. Waukee has taken a 7-0 lead on Northwest. Johnston and Cedar Falls tied at well, zero. Centennial scored twice to lead Ames 14-0. Dowling still leads Valley 7-0 in a home game at Valley Stadium and also one that you can watch on CISN on our, on our other feed. First and 10 for the Rams from, again, in Ankeny territory. Short field at the 49. Moberly throws a dart caught in the secondary by Sam Zelenovich. Pickup of almost nine, Samuel Z. I think was in there first. Moberly has a really good deliveries out there. He's very deliberate with it. Uh, has a very catchable ball that comes in. The, the nose doesn't come down. It's a little bit up there, so it's a great ball for receivers to catch. He throws it on a dime right in their hand, so a lot of experience there at quarterback. Dylan Doherty also there for the tackle. Pickup of eight. Zelenovich goes in motion, far to near side. They throw it to him on the bubble screen. Caught at the 45, gets up near the 40 before he's taken out of bounds by Sam Sandvig and Jacob Moorfeld. But it'll be enough to move the chains for the Rams. Very patient offense here. Look at that, he has time there to throw. Kind of calling what they want to call. They don't need to go down the field right now looking at picking up five yards at a time. Two receivers to the right from Oberly. He looks to the left, calls for the ball, now looks to the sideline for the play. Robbins and also Cooper Butel to the right. Phillip is back into the game and he gets the handoff. He stood up initially, but still somehow is able to oh, keep on way. going. Leo Aguirre Leo there Jordan first. Aguirre. But here's the thing, Tim. It's a lot of second and third efforts for the Rams tonight. Hawks missing on first blood. Yeah, he had him stood up at the line of scrimmage, but Gavin Douglas from his guard, 280 pound guard came in there, hit the pile, moved it about three yards. So that's where the, the positive yardage came from. These linemen coming in the backside and pushing the scrum. So bringing up a second and eight. Manning Allen comes back into that defensive line spot. Hawks look to maybe bring some pressure, and they do. Anderson flushed. Here comes Wernow. Moberly throws it away and out of bounds to a cheerleader somewhere around lane seven of the track. Wernow came off the right edge there, causing Moberly to keep running, and then he just threw it out of bounds. Live to live for another play. Look at this stat, Tim, right now. on It's 138 passing for the Rams, 39 rushing for a total of 177. The Hawks 63. Passing seven rushing, 70 total, and a lot. And if you take out that first drive, it's not even that close. Third and seven for the Rams from their own 35, 642. They lead 21 7, looking to get another score here, trying to convert on third down. Timeout, Moberly is the play clock down to one. We'll step away from Ankeny Stadium here on CISN. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Spring will be here soon, and our selection of patio furniture is fantastic. But it won't be that way forever. If you want to get furniture for your deck this summer, come see us now. All the best brands and the best selection. And if you want a special order for this summer, we still have time to do that. Come see us now. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Over 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Shot and Kirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Shot and Kirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. I'm guessing this will be the most. Seven, 20, 21, seven. I was just about to say, Tim, in the, in the timeout, this is a very physical offensive front, both I'm not talking just the linemen for Southeast Park. Right, wouldn't you say the receivers are pretty darn physical at the line? Yeah, we are. And, you know, we saw Southeast Park do this several years ago. It came in a playoff game, the 16 seed. So 
But yeah, they're very impressed with the line work on both sides of the ball. Moberly on third and seven from the 35, empty backfield. Here comes some heat, the screen, it's caught by Zelenovic at the 30, still on his feet, cuts back 25, 20. It's a race for the end zone. Sam Zelenovic on third and seven on a screen, scores a 35-yard score. Made it look way too easy. Great play by the Rams. I would like to see that play. I saw about four linemen downfield, even though it was a forward pass. I would have to, it's more than a screen, but I have to see where the linemen were lined up. The ball is back here. The linemen are downfield about eight yards downfield. So if I was the coaches, I'd be talking about uh, Lyman, even though it's going to a receiver. But well-designed play. Slavis did not give up on the play. Scored the touchdown. Extra point is good. 28-7, the Rams flexing their muscle here tonight at Ankeny Stadium. 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. To watch that play again that uh, Southeast Pope just scored on here before the kick. As we Dalton back, almost came up with the interception on a screen pass. We'll show you after the kick. Sorry about that. 28 7 Rams lead the Hawks. It has been an explosive 28 points for Southeast Pope. As Kinnick Voss is back at his own five. What do you want, Champlathon? put his left foot into it and he does taken at the goal line by Hankus he's at the 15 20 and he is hit extremely well and quickly by Joshua Wilson let's go down to Austin let's watch the replay first here Tim the line of scrimmage is the 35 there's a lineman four yards three yards deep there were a couple that are about the 28 maybe the 29 yes so now as a defensive player, I, I have to call it out, but that's but gives Lenovich credit that he caught the ball, went up, got it, crossed the field, weaved his way through for a touchdown. So credit goes to him for playing the play to the end. Hawks didn't need much time to score last week. They're going to have to figure out a way to get a sustained drive. Larmy gets handoff on first down, runs through the secondary up to the 25-yard line. Maybe one of his best carries of the game before Carter Peshik makes the tackle for Southeast Polk. Good block there by Evan Spence to pop that open for Larmy to gain six yards. Pick up of seven as we approach six minutes. Larmy gets through the hole and then he is lit, lit up. Chebahar. There's something to be said. I mean, we haven't talked about Caleb quite enough. Third year starter. I mean, that guy is playing like a 12th-year veteran in the league right now. Third and two. Larmy, the handoff, and he is going to be short. He maybe got a yard. It's a linebacker's in there. Martinson in there closing, getting off his assignment there, but they're about, about one yard short here on a fourth down. Fourth and one. We had seen the Wildcat last weekend. The, Ram the Rams Kaiser. are, the Hawks are going on the, the sneak and that didn't work real well the last time. Anderson gets his head down and I think he's gonna be close. I think they're gonna, uh, he looks like he might be a, a half a yard short. Looking at the line judge coming in there. Ball needed to get to the 20. The Rams are saying he is short. Depends where this mark goes. And we have a down player for the Rams kicking off the helmet. Martinson down there underneath that pile. Can't tell if that is. That's a double number with an eight that starts. So it could be. <laughs> 60. Yep, looks like Cooper Martinson down yep, there. So yeah, Cooper Martinson, who made the tackle. But we haven't resolved the where the ball is yet either. 
He had to get to the 28, and he looks like he's around the 27 and a half on that fourth down attempt. You may have a measurement. Jeff Bauer looking and having a conversation with the Whitehead Craig Van Ark at the numbers, pleading his case about the spot. Austin Oliver, I don't know if you can hear us right exactly, but uh, yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, what are you what are you seeing from down there? Well, I think it's it looks like the Southeast Pole guys are saying it's going to be a turnover on down. That is number sixty that uh, was the injured player on there as well. So yeah, that is Cooper Martinson. They're going to measure here, and it's short. Yeah, but it's short. It's going to be short by at least a ball length. Oh. Not even, uh, that's a full yard. So it'll be a turnover on downs. The Rams will take it back Not over with five minutes. Right First and 10, Sully's post. Hate to see Martinson go out there, man. That, he needed a lot of help putting no pressure on that left leg at all. Yeah, he is a, he is a force in the middle there, 6'4", 265 on a junior has quite an impact in there taking on guards and centers. That's a very physical position, but he controls that, gets such a push up there. They talk about, you know, putting a dent in the offensive line. So now the defense is back out. They've got to watch their reads. With five minutes to go, they're probably going to spread them out. Southeast Polk's been trying to get that running game back going. They don't need the running game when they have the passing game working like they do. Two receivers to the right now. Coming to the near side is Thaden Abbas. Phillip next to Moberly. Play action. Moberly steps under pressure, throws to the back of the end zone. He's got a wide open man. Caught in the end zone. Touchdown. Carson Robbins. 27 yards for the Rams. Robbins got there in the single coverage on the far side. Moberly scrambling, stepped up in the pocket and threw it to the corner. Perfect throw and catch. Again, getting behind the defense. And that was a linebacker. That was Gavin Wise on the extra on the coverage there. Extra point is good. 35-7. 35, 35 unanswered good points for the Rams here with 454 to go before halftime. Back in a moment. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Do you know what the best part about being a dog is? You can hear disaster before it even happens. You know what they say about disaster. Sometimes it can inspire a symphony. An honest day's work deserves an honest day's treat. No extra charge. And that is why we choose honest wrenches. No extra charge. And it's how service Coming up at halftime, we will have a conversation with volleyball coach Liz Bedke, but over on the Ankeny Activities Network Facebook page, you'll be able to watch the coverage of the Ankeny Band. So if you are wanting to see the band in action tonight, take a look at that over on Ankeny Activities Network, which also I think is streaming tonight's game as well. Before the play, there's a penalty oh, flag. I think we're going to have the same play we had earlier in the game. I think the uh, South Republic might have taken off a little early. But they're on the behind the receivers. The official called it over there, so. We'll also have a chance to talk to the, the two head coaches. Brad Zelenovich will converse with Austin Here, Oliver. Did they pick up the flag? I think it was a, a no play. I think they weren't signaled for ready yet. Okay. But I thought I heard the whistle. I did too. 35-7. It's been all Southeast Polk since Ankeny scored first. Rams went three and out to start the game and then have, have not been turned away since. Jeff.
Chant the Fawn to kick it. High kick taken. Hankus a yard into the end zone. It's a touchback. All right, Austin Oliver. This is a this is a this Ram team is something to see in person. I tell you what, um, Ankeny has, has not had horrible coverage on each of these touchdowns either. The player's been right there, but Moberly's just putting it right on the button every time. It's a, it's a sight to see down here on the field. Here come the Hawks again, trying to find some momentum. Just get, get a first down. That's what's got to be your goal here on this drive. Try not to let... I think we have some miscommunication here. Hawks may have to take a timeout, but play clock down to 10. They have time to get set. Play action. Anderson's flushed, and he's almost going for Erlmeyer. Coverage for Caleb Chebahar again for the Rams there. It'll be second down incomplete. A little mix up in the backfield. Uh, it was supposed to be a play fake or a rollout. But Luke's being flushed quite a bit, and he's getting, he's throwing off his back foot a lot, so he's not getting as much of the ball as he did earlier on. So he's going to have to look at maybe getting his feet planted to get a good pass off. Three receivers to the near side of the field. Anderson with time. Throws down the far sideline. Has a man. It's Akers, but he's pass is broken up. Caden Hills on coverage may have gotten a hand on it. He could hit him in the back as he was going down the field there. Slightly under underthrown. It's the first time Akers has been targeted in a while. Larmy now goes to the near side of Anderson. Third and 10 from the 20. Anderson throws, caught by that's Mason Randolph. He gets a seven-yard gain. Trayton Nave. And the Hawks are going to have to kick this away, right? They've got to play field position here. Allowing the clock to run. That's the advantage of having a play stay in bounds. You're actually running some clock off here. Rams are bringing a rush on the left side. They get a lot of white shirts through. Harrington gets it away. Taken, fair catch at the 38-yard line. That's Carson Robbins, the senior. And the Rams will come back out. Waukee leads Northwest 14-7. Centennial has scored again 21-0. Johnston 14, Cedar Falls 7. Next week we are going to have... Cedar Falls and Centennial. Tonight, the Tigers playing Johnston. And the Jaguars are to the north in Ames, where something may or may not happen around 1 o'clock tomorrow. Next week, the Hawks go to Dowling, who lead Valley 7-0. Last series, I said the Rams would be running the ball, and they threw, it, threw a pass play. So I'm going to guess they're going to pass. Trying to get to that 35-point threshold to start the second half. Yeah, before, a couple of receivers have been very close to moving before the snap. That time, I think Zelenovic did. And he's the one, I think. Yep, Sam whistled on that one. We've seen Abbas lined up in the slot out there. He's normally lined up as fullback. Back in there in the fullback slot as they come into a 11 personnel. Phillip at the line is hit. We're now there. Also, I think that might have been Right Sam Sandvig, I think. Z, Samuel Z was also there. Z but collapsed Angela the play. <laughs> he came in from the outside, <laughs> collapsed it. He got slapped. He goes, take it down. He crashed it down, caused, caused uh, Phillip to stop his forward progress, had to dance out of there, so the, his friends came and got the tackle. But some of those unsung things, you don't get credit for the tackle, but you, you do impact the play. 
after the penalty, which made it first and 15, that was a gain of one. So it's second and 14 from the 34. Handoff. That's not Phillip, but the other running back, Landon Vanderwerf, and Dylan Doherty makes the tackle. A lot of good things said about Vanderwerf and his ability when he had the opportunity last week, made it count. So not only do you have one good back, you have another one. That's also a good option. What they play there, they bring the tight end, loop around from the outside back in. Probably, probably some push the running back, you know, Vanderwerf running up behind him, you know, London. Lundgren, so a blocking tight end makes a big, big impact here. And if you're going to play for this offense, you got to be a big blocking tight end first. Gain of eight makes it third and six. Empty backfield again. No, there is Vanderwerf, but he's going to be in pass protection. They throw far side. Caught Zelenovic. First down and more. Gets out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. Kinnick Voss makes the stop. The clock will stop with the ball out of bounds. And a first down for a moment. Here's the replay. They ran right on by Sandvig in that one. They're doing a good job. These receivers are very experienced. They're doing a good job of reading the coverage and then adjusting the route. Someone's going to cut the route off and someone's going to take someone deep, finding the soft spot underneath. Moberly, nobody to his right. Throws to his left, caught Zelenovich. Grabbed by his hip, Doherty. Starts it, Zam Z finishes it, also Nolan Dalton. Pickup of seven on that play. Clock is running, they've got Rams have one timeout left for this half. Vanderwerf next to Moberly, calls for it. Actually, they throw to the right. On the slant again, it's caught. Carson Robbins. Robbins is lined up wide to the right, taken back, coming back and said, do a little crossing route with Zelenovich out there, finding that slant in. It's gonna be open because they're playing man to man out there. So he's taking his man to the inside, can't follow him all the way across, over to the hash marks and getting a first down. Kinnick Voss on the tackle. Voss comes to the near side for coverage that you see there on the bottom of your screen on Falloon. Minute 25, clock moving after the chains were set. The Rams taking their time on offense here. Play action, throw to the end zone. The man's there, throw to the back. It is caught, touchdown. He's pleading that he had dropped the ball, that he had either got the ball. I think it was Zelenovic. Morfield back there pleading his case that he did not catch the ball, that they battled the ball as it went Fal through. They're going to say Falloon. The extra point is up, and it is good. We'll watch the play and the replay and look at it when we come back. 42-7, Rams. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Spring will be here soon, and our selection of patio furniture is fantastic. But it won't be that way forever. If you want to get furniture for your deck this summer, come see us now. All the best brands and the best selection. And if you want a special order for this summer, we still have time to do that. Come see us now. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Over 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. 42-7, Southeast Polk. We're going to look at the replay here in a minute and try to fill in who actually caught that touchdown. The press box theory is Carson Robbins. But we were looking at Jacob Moorfeld and tying up Robbins. Moorfeld pleading his case that he had made the interception as that kick is five yards deep in the end zone. So, Randy, let's see that touchdown again if we can, please. Here's the replay. 
We're watching the top right part of your screen. And that is Robbins on Moorfeld. But, okay, now I see why Moorfeld's making the, the case that he is, because he did take it away, but I still now, think unlike he already the, had it. Unlike the NFL, did he have enough of a catch down there that he had possession when he was on the ground? Or was the ball moving and he took it out, but we can't go to replay? Hawks will have it first and 10 from the 20. Kind of wondering what happened. Anderson to throw. Oh, caught Devin Akers near the 30. To Devin Akers. Hawks have all three timeouts. First down. Last week they went 90 yards and 90 seconds to score a touchdown right before half. So they do have the ability to move the ball. Anderson to pass. First receiver not there. Looks for his second man. It's caught Akers. At the 34, timeout Ankeny. Timeout Ankeny. I was saying that previous play, Moorfield had great coverage on it. He did everything he could, and they were looking at Moberly probably is the best passer I've seen in several years in terms of accuracy tonight. He is hitting guys in stride, hitting them in their hands, and that's this has been the best passing performance I've seen in several years. And we've seen some good quarterbacks come through. I want to look up one thing. You take out Ankeny's first drive. Their first drive to score, they had drives with four, worth 48, 18, negative six, no gain, nine yards, eight yards, 14 yards. So take out that first 48, and it's really Ankeny only about 58 yards of offense to Southeast Pokes 306. Three receivers to the top side. Anderson with time. Throws across the middle. It's intercepted. Picked off by the Rams. Trey Lust at midfield. And then he's wrestled down at the 44-yard line. Tackle made for the Hawks by Mason Randolph. 20 seconds to go. And the Rams are not going to have to take a snap. As you look at this replay here. It's hard to go across the middle like that because if you overthrow it a little bit, that deep safety, and that's what they're doing down there. They're playing a, a cover three back there. Lust playing the center field. Was able to catch that slightly overthrown over Hankus right down the center. The clocks go to zeros, and the Hawks will head to the locker room, and so will the Rams. As... Brad Zelenovich, Austin Oliver will find him in just a moment. As he, it's going to be a pretty uh, easy conversation for Austin there. Uh, real quick, it, uh, just to give you an idea, Phillip, 10 carries, 31 yards, passing it's 15 to 20 for 258. So passing game is working, Austin Oliver, as he looks for Brad Zelenovich on that far sideline. We make the connection. Let's go down to Austin. All right, Coach, uh, a little bit of a slow start, but uh, both offensively and defensively, you got things rolling right now. Yeah, I kind of settled in. We weren't ready to play. Again, that's our fault. You know, it kind of happened two weeks in a row. But uh, give credit to them. They came out on fire and, and hit us with a big play and tempoed us. But then, you know, we settled in and made some plays. Looking great, Coach. We'll look for a second half here. Thanks. Say uh, Brad Zelenovich and Austin Oliver with our first half interview. Ankeny scored first, but it has been all Southeast Poke since then. Rams lead 42-7. We'll take a break. The band will come onto the field. If you want to watch the band performance, head over to the Ankeny Activities Facebook page. If you want to see the interview with Coach Liz Bedkis, keep it here on CISN. This is halftime from Ankeny Stadium. We're at halftime here on CISN. It's time to talk volleyball. New volleyball coach Liz Bedke uh, joins us now. Coach, uh, no stranger to the CIML. Coached at Urbandale. You played at East. You you know this league a little bit. What's it like to be coaching from a different bench this year? Oh, I'm just really excited for the opportunity because, uh, you know, I've, I've been at Urbandale for 23 years and just felt like it was time I had one last big move to make and uh, honestly Ankeny is the only 
spot I would consider around this area. It came open, I had a teaching job with it, so it, it felt like the right fit and the right time. And you inherit a team that was at state last year. Um, you had to be very familiar with the squad, just in scouting, and I think you played each other last year, too. Yeah, I'm uh, super happy that I don't have to scout this team any longer, that's for sure. Lots of hours put into doing those types of things. So I do know several of the returners, you know, even prior to making that decision, for sure. What What have you learned about those girls now that they're on? you're all wearing the same colors that maybe you didn't before? Well, I, I was really excited that they were so open. I mean, they've had some turnover here lately with coaches and I think that they just, they want someone who's going to devote some years and stay with the program. And they were very open to having me come in there. And um, I, I wasn't really sure because I could go either way. Mm -hmm. Been very welcoming so far. What uh, you, you you inherit some great players. Um, let's let's go through a few of them. Uh, you you kind of ran through the lineup with me earlier. Uh, tell me about your team. Who is fun to watch? Because I have a hard time keeping up with your squad when I watch them. Well, it, they all bring such an energetic dynamic. Um, so we can just kind of start with the veterans of the face of Ankeny volleyball for the last four years with Ao and Schrader, mm -hmm. and Roush. Ava Willie, um, Bailey Carlson also had some floor time last year. Um, but, you know, there's a nice mix of veteran and newcomers, and it's starting to, like, I noticed the first time I stepped on the court in July that the chemistry is incredible. And if, if we can solidify that piece, then there's no stopping us, that's for sure. Because physically, um, I think we have one of the most powerful offenses even in the state, I would say that already. And just, like I said, being on the other side, scouting uh, these young women, they're, they're amazing on and off the court. You can devote more time now to uh, scouting those other opponents and uh, oh. in, in doing things like that. What is scouting yes. for you? I mean, what does it look like for you? Because I, I, I know how it is in other sports, but what's it look like? <laughs> what's volleyball scouting look like for you? I, I I'm, just kind of geek out about it. I put a lot of hours into it. You watch serve receive patterns. You watch individual hitting tendencies. Where, you know what they like to run in certain rotations. Where to serve, who to serve. Um, there's it's it's actually pretty complex. Um, and I like I feel like if I know our opponents inside and out, I can better prepare our kids. Uh, sometimes we don't spend a lot of time as a team watching the other other side because honestly with the group I have right now I want to really emphasize controlling our side and if we control our side it's going to it's going to benefit us and if I can prepare them for the other side with my knowledge then I think that's time better spent but I'm not opposed to the team watching film either volleyball is a year-round sport it, it, it appears from those from the outside. Uh, you have girls that play on clubs with each other. You have girls that maybe used to live in a different district that know each other. Is that fun? Yeah, because they also, like, if you just happen to see them in the summer and, you know, you bring your team in and we just say, hey, you know, what do we know about these guys? And there's always someone that played with another kid on the team and, you know, for Four months they were digging them up on the other side of the net or they had to play together so it is an interesting piece when mm -hmm. it gets you know kids get playing from other schools but it's also kind of neat too because it's forever relationships and what's the pressure like then to you, you mentioned a couple of new people trying to crack the rotation knowing the numbers or what they are it's hard to keep people with playing time but it's something you have to do to build so it's an easier reload every year. How do you balance Correct. that? Uh, well, like I said, those juniors that are coming in, whether it's Reagan Hanfill, uh, Cam Scheib, um, Olivia Ike, uh, they all have height, uh, extreme athletic ability, powerful players, fun to watch. 
Uh, so it's just making sure that, you know, if you're going to bring one of those younger players up, they have to play. They can't just kind of have a tug of war between JV and Barcy. They have to get their reps. They have to get their time. I'm, I'm just not, my philosophy is not to, to bring them up and have just practice players. I think that you can balance that pretty easily, but it's, um, you know, Ankeny traditionally seems like they have about 60, 65 kids. Um, and I think that overall, most years they have it kind of cut the, the right way. And mm -hmm. obviously they're powerhouse every year. So they're doing something right. Uh, you and Coach Wims, you texting? Is he giving you critique, feedback? I mean, he does that for a lot of sports. So, and, and knowing that the two of you coached against each other for a number of years, that relationship has to be a little different. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> My first year coaching varsity, I was 22 years old. Had a lot to learn. Um, I was very transactional. And in 2000, that's when Wims came on the scene with Ankeny and I I didn't care for him at all at first but then as I got to know him he definitely became you know someone I looked up to and sort of mentor is a strong word but he he would take care of me he would ask me about teams do I need film he was notorious for going to everyone's uh, Saturday tournament and just taping all day and he he had film for me for anyone. He had a library. <laughs> and, uh, there were times that I would look back and we would go and scrimmage at Ankeny and it was just the teams that were going to state. And he's like, we should just drill at each other. It's unlikely we're going to meet up because you're on one side of the bracket. I'm on another. And I'm like, great, let's do this. He's coaching my kids and coaching his kids. And one of his team moms walked up and said, Dave, stop coaching other team. <laughs> so <laughs> He's just so passionate about the sport, and uh, yeah. you know, I, I hope that I can make him proud with, uh, you know, the tradition and the program that he's built, and he still cares for immensely. I know he does, and uh, he was he was open to talking. He wasn't sure if mm -hmm. he wanted to come to practice right now because he had a lot going on, but mm -hmm. um, I'm excited to see him. That's that's fantastic. I had not heard that story, but that is not a surprise uh, with him. Uh, you beat Waukee 3-0 this week, uh, playing in the Valley Tournament over the weekend. Then you have some uh, some other big matches coming up. I mean, the goal is always state, right? Absolutely. There is there is no doubt about it. And I think that um, the way the season ended for these kids last fall left a bad taste in their mouth. And I'm kind of happy about that because they're they're bitter, they're angry, and they want to take care of business. And it, it's definitely um, a mission that I'm here for it. <laughs> well, we'll see how it all uh, turns out. Coach, I appreciate your time. Best of luck the rest of the season. And uh, keep smiling. Yeah, it's fun, right? It's supposed to be I fun. I, my <laughs> jaw hurts from smiling all day long. I just, it's great. <laughs> I love it. Liz Betke, head volleyball coach at Ankeny High School. This is our halftime show. The second half when we return here on CISN. The Arm and Ford Summer Sales Event. Ford F-150 XLT with 3.9% for 72 months plus 27.50 rebate. Flex 5 must trade for 95 or newer. Get 2.9% for 60 months on the new Ford Expedition. Explore and Edge with additional bonus cash offers. And the all-electric Ford Mustang Mach-E with 3.9% for 72 months plus $2,000 bonus cash plus 90 days no payments. It's the Summer Sales Event at Arm and Ford Indianola. DeArmandFord.com. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Spring will be here soon, and our selection of patio furniture is fantastic. But it won't be that way forever. If you want to get furniture for your deck this summer, come see us now. All the best brands and the best selection. And if you want a special order for this summer, we still have time to do that. Come see us now. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Let's face it, it's Iowa and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are going to get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same day AC service appointments at the ready. 
We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, West Side Auto Pros. For 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Trucks are arriving daily during Schottenkirk Chevy's truckload kickoff event. Over 1,200 vehicles. WaukeeChevy.com. Inventory changes hourly. Don't see exactly what you want? Build, price, and order direct from the factory. To better serve you, we've doubled the size of our service department. We need more team members. Go to WaukeeChevy.com to see our job openings. The truckload kickoff event. Find new roads to Schottenkirk Waukee Chevy. WaukeeChevy.com. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Spring will be here soon, and our selection of patio furniture is fantastic. It won't be that way forever. If you want to get furniture for your deck this summer, come see us now. All the best brands and the best selection. And if you want a special order for this summer, we still have time to do that. Come see us now. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Back here at halftime, Southeast Polk in control, 42-7. This is a game that started with Ankeny actually forcing Southeast Polk on a three and out off Good the luck, field. Andrew. Ankeny Good scores on their first on. possession, and then Southeast Polk scores 42 unanswered, and they have done it a lot through the air. Tim Halber, Paul Yeager, Austin Oliver with us here as well. Tim, exchanging a couple of texts here at halftime with some people. Ugh. Oh, my. And there's a reason South East Post is number one. Accurate? Very accurate. This has been a very dominant team. Um, only 48 yards rushing, but Moberly's taken over the passing game. He's got he's 15 of 20. He's got four touchdown passes. Ran one in on his own. So that offensive line is doing a good job keeping him upright, and he has been very very accurate. This passes spot on, hitting his receivers. Hawks have tried some pressure now and again, but Moberly has just had kind of his pick of places to go. At one point, he had three different players. That back right flag pattern. There is a catch with uh, Philip. Uh, I'm sorry, that's Robbins. Uh, that was one of those touches. Play. That outside flag and drag or uh, post have been there all game. Yeah, the flag, the little, little zip out or, or the, 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 the skinny post as they run it. Receivers are doing a very good job of knowing how the coverage is, and then Mobley is reading it to know who's going to be open, either crossing it or taking it to the outside. He knows how to pick out the open guy. It looks like these guys are wide open, but we're seeing a quarterback really dissecting this Ankeny Hawk defense. Yeah, he has, uh, Moberly has been as good as advertised. Let's take a look at another one of these. This is the play that may have kind of really broken the back of, of Ankeny. It was a third, long third down play. Sam Zelenovich on the screen. 
I think somewhere around 35 yards on that big play, and it was it was really kind of that was the uh, the dagger at that point. Let's take a look at some of these stats for Southeast Polk. 15 to 20 passing for 258 yards, 48 yards rushing, total of 306. Phillip 10 carries, 31 yards rushing. Uh, then catches, it's been Robin 7 for 127. Zelenovich 8 for 131. I mean, those are your headlines right there. It's It's been impressive. Really, those are the only two guys that have caught the ball, but it's been uh, Vanderwerf with a touchdown. Zelenovich with two receiving, Moberly with one rushing, and then Robbins two catches. For Ankeny, 85 yards passing on 14 of 20, but it's just been hard to get any yards, only 85 yards. Receiving, Earlmeyer four catches, three for Hankas, four for Akers for 57 yards, one for Randolph, one for Larmy. It's it's the disappearance of Acres that probably stands out the most in the passing game in the second quarter. Yeah, they uh, after that first series, they really shut him down. Urmar is stepping up the pace, but if you don't have that balance with the running game to keep that offense, we're seeing that uh, Luke Anders is back there, backpilling. He's throwing off his back foot. He's he's not as stepping forward into his throws to cause it to, to be a little off target there. So when the rushing game's not going. It's hard to go. All right, Austin Oliver is down there on the sideline. He's walking with head coach Jeff Bauer. Let's go down to Austin Oliver for this halftime update. Austin. Hey, coach, uh, that was a half. Uh, but uh, some bright points at the beginning, uh, some offensively and defensively. Uh, what would you tell the troops at the halftime? Yeah, uh, we started like we wanted to. And all of a sudden, I mean, we stopped executing, you know, both offensively and defensively. We had issues holding blocks, obviously issues – getting the right gaps in defense, covering guys and man, uh, we struggled. I don't know what it, you know, obviously Southeast Polk is very good. They made a lot of good plays, but uh, yeah, disappointed how we competed and we weren't physical enough that second part of the second half or first half. So I, we just challenged the guys, hey, we have to come out and win this half. You know, this doesn't define our season. We have to get better in this half and uh, compete. Sounds good, Coach. Thank you, Thon. Right, Austin Oliver with uh, Jeff Bauer. A little different tone here as uh, we will step aside as the two teams get ready for the second half. This is high school football. Southeast Polk number one in the state in control, 42-7. National sales event is going on all month long at Diamond Automotive Knoxville. New Silverado 1500 Turbo Max with up to $9,000 off MSRP. Must trade 09 or newer. Must own or lease 09 or newer Chevrolet. New Sierra 1500s with 2.9% for 60 months. Available in all trucks. New Jeep Gladiator with up to $7,000 off MSRP. And new Ram 1500s with up to $11,000 off MSRP. Every vehicle is tagged with one low price at Diamond Automotive Knoxville. DiamondAuto.com. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Let's face it, it's Iowa and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are going to get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same day AC service appointments at the ready. We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, Westside Auto Pros. For 75 years, Holt service trucks have hit the streets of central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Finish strong. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? 
The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Do you know what the best part about being a dog is? You can hear disaster before it even happens. You know what they say about disaster. Sometimes it can inspire a symphony. An honest day's work deserves an honest day's treat. No extra charge. And that is why we choose honest wrenches. No extra charge. And it's how service Second half getting close to starts. Prairie leads senior 14-7. Johnston in front of Cedar Falls 14-7. Centennial will have a running clock in their third quarter up 35-0. Dowling leads Valley 7-0. Waukee leads Northwest 17-7. Here it is 42-7. Tim Halber, Paul Yeager, Austin Oliver, Jeff Martin, Steve Hartley. We're all here. Gang's all here. And we've been treated to an offensive <coughs> mastery by Southeast Pope. We can see that they've been, you know, back-to-back -back state champs. They are a machine the players have plugged in. You see in good senior leadership, very strong that defensive line. They really shut down the running game completely for the Yankee Hawks. They're trying to get something going here. So good offensive line play. They haven't been able to run the ball, but they haven't needed to because of the passing of Moberly. We've seen kickings like this put on teams, 42, 48 points and a half. This wasn't a bad Yankee team. This was just poke better in every facet of the game in this first half. I mean, Ankeny is putting up a fight, and they are trying. Poke is just impressive. It's like we see in Super Bowls that way. Two great teams go in there, and there's a blowout. We can't forget that this Ankeny Hawk team is a very young team on the field. We're seeing a lot of junior sophomores out there playing, get a lot of valuable playing experience. So they were young coming in last week, played played above themselves, play organized. Now when things are going awry, it's, it's hard to write the ship in the middle of the game. So they'll play with a lot of spirit. I don't doubt that. But they're really they're a young team playing a very, very experienced, top-ranked Southeast Polk uh, team. As Coach Bauer told Austin Oliver right there coming out of half, we've got to win the half. Let's see what the Hawks can do. They take the first kick of the second half. It's going to be Hankus trying to get to the outside, and he has just popped at the 17. Good special teams play by Christian Scalco. And it'll be Ankeny offense to start, and it looks like it's all the starters. So, all right, if you're Luke Anderson here, Tim, do you just try to forget that first half? What are you trying to do here in the second half? I think you do. You just like, you know, what what uh, let's get the timing back here, let's get in and out of the huddle, let's get a running game going. Yep. Larmy off right tackle. He gets ooh, horse collar. At about the 26-yard line. The Ankeny fans want a little more than that. And the tackle. Caden Hills. Caden Hills. B Roth out there with the block, so was Summerfield. Sprung that to the outside. One of the better runs, probably the longest run they've had so far this game by Larmy to the outside, plus the penalty. First down, they're going to say he got 10 on that play. Larmy again running a little harder there and quickly stopped after a quick gain. It's Winjet. Glad I wrote that name down. I didn't have Winjet on my two deep, Tim. A uh, couple of guys, you know, coaches always, you know, I appreciate all the coaches that give information, but. You don't know who's going to pop up on any given night. Right. Anderson gives to Larmy. Now left side. Larmy has a head of speed. He's tripped up. Larmy's a nice job there. Cutting, cutting inside the blacks. Tristan Mullis out there getting the block. Larmy does a nice job of cutting it up the field. He's definitely a north and south of the runner. And that's where he gets a lot of his yards by making a decisive move, playing that foot and going. So the ground game's giving the lineman a little bit of tempo. Given, give him nine on the play. Second and short, Larmy again, left side, has the first down, up towards the 40-yard line before Caleb Chebahar and also Mason, Van, uh, Mason Vanderbrink combined. Got another first down there on the offense, so they're going to ride that a little bit there with the 11 personnel. 
Larmy now gets into the hip of Anderson. They give it to Larmy, who jets to the outside, goes down at the 42, and that was one of those plays. He saw the train coming. He saw the train of Nathan uh, Noah Frank and Diego Naranjo. Gain of two. Larmy up the middle across the 45. Thank you the That's Henkes, actually. Vanderbrink, the tackle. Right down by 10, Vanderbrink. Double team there by the center and the guard. You know, Heck and Mullis getting out there, drive blocking down there, getting an opening, making a third and short for the offense. Hankus now to the left side of Anderson. Hankus gets the call. Gets hit, but still pulls a couple of extra yards. <laughs> Noah Frank again. Chebihar in there on the tackle to only keep him to a two-yard gain, so now we bring this out there. Ford Dell looks like they're going to go for the offense and staying on the field. Initially, we got a lot of people going in a lot of places. Are they going to call timeout? They are. Ankeny has to call timeout. I think some people Pretty thought much. it was a punt. Others thought it was a go for. It's fourth and two when we return here at Ankeny Stadium. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Spring will be here soon, and our selection of patio furniture is fantastic. But it won't be that way forever. If you want to get furniture for your deck this summer, come see us now. All the best brands and the best selection. And if you want a special order for this summer, we still have time to do that. Come see us now. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Over 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. Waukee Chevy. Hawks to go for it on fourth down. Two yards to go. They go Hankus out of the Wildcat. Sweeps to the left side. He's across midfield. He'll move the chains. And get a big offensive push. Looks like, let's see, 11 and 33. That took me a minute there. That's Nave and, oh, well, how do I not have Chebahar's name in my brain yet? That guy's been everywhere tonight. A lot of big bodies out there. It's a confusion that they brought in. It's a big lineman, you know. Evan Ramick coming in as lineman. And they go Hankus again now right side, and oh my goodness, blowing up that play. Mason Vanderbrink, holy cow, did you see that? Yeah, usually that play only has about uh, not many variations in there. I think they got stuck with the personnel on the field, so they decided to run the play again just to the right side there, and they blew it up, so they lost a yard on the play. Luckily, he didn't lose the ball because Vanderbrink came in there with the tent. Larmy had no chance against Mason. Holy cow, second and 11. Anderson throws off his back foot, caught at the 45, and about one, maybe two more yards for Mason Randolph. And Rand yeah, Randolph with a couple catches out there, got it there. This kind of sat down in front of that corner, was playing way off, so it's a good read by Randolph. Peshik, the tackle. Gain of five, third and five. Actually, gain of six. Anderson throws, caught by Akers at his shoestrings up to the 40 but short of the first down by maybe two yards as Nave comes up for the tackle. Anderson had no time to set up his feet to get anything on the ball that he kind of threw it out there as much as hard as he could so now a fourth and two. From the 39 Hawks need to get to the 37 to keep things moving. Anderson with time throws deep. He's got Akers down the far sideline. One hand grab Walks into the end zone! Holy cow! What a play! Devin Akers makes it look easy. 39 yards and a Hawks score. Stuck out that big right mid out there. Caught it one hand. The other arm, straight arm, Nave there going to the sideline. Tiptoed down the picket fence into the end zone for a touchdown. Look at that play. Got behind his guy. That is Little League Ankeny Junior football. Call it what you want. Oh, Devin Akers. 42-13 pending the extra point. 
Well, the Hawks have won the first half so far, 7-0. Unfortunately, they're down 42-14. We're back in a moment. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Do you know what the best part about being a dog is? You can hear disaster before it even happens. You know what they say about disaster. Sometimes it can inspire a symphony. An honest day's work deserves an honest day's treat. No extra charge. And that is why we choose honest wrenches. No extra charge. And it's how service Well, the Yankee Hawks convert on a couple of fourth downs, including a fourth and two with Devin Akers. To start the third quarter for the Hawks, it's going to be a kick taken at the 17-yard line by Carson Robbins. He gets to the outside, still on his feet, 30, 35, 40. It's got to be the kicker, Harrington. But a huge... And flag. then a late flag comes flying in, and I'm guessing by the cheering on the far sideline, this one is not going to be uh, on Ankeny's side. Austin Oliver is there on the sideline as we watch this replay, Austin. What would you see in that? Uh, yeah, late hit call. Late hit? Okay. Yeah, there we go. Now we have you, Austin. Yeah, I was just going to call out. Uh, I just said in the first half, too, that I like those matchups on the outside for the Hawks with the taller receivers, both 18 and 11. Uh, kind of reared its head again there with uh, with that touchdown pass. I'd love to see them uh, come back to that here as uh, they get some other drives here in the second half. What did you pick up from Coach Bauer and his demeanor uh, when you were talking to him? Well, I tell you what. I mean, what do you, what do you say? You know, I think he, he said all the right things and the things that you you know you want to hear from a coach. But uh, you know, emotionally coming off of a high with the game last week and then having that kind of a half, uh, I know he's disappointed and. Uh, uh, hoping to turn things around, and hopefully they can do so in the second half. Well, after the penalty, it moves it all the way up to the 37-yard line. Phillip gets the call on first down and gets nine and a half, Three ten. C.J. Phillip running like a man possessed. Nolan Dalton there right now, to make a Nolan tackle. Dalton. Now, the thing about Phillip is uh, 30, it's a 31-yard return, 15-yard penalty to clear up that play. The thing about Phillip, played for Dowling last year, Played kind of sporadically and then transferred after the season. Dowling had two other running backs that were really, really good. Phillip happens to be the odd man out, but right now he looks like the odd man in. He is having a, a, a nice contest. 11 carries, 41 yards coming into the second half. First and 10 from the 27. Phillip again dashes, dances, and then goes down right at the point of first contact with Jacob Morfeld. Yeah, not much running. He didn't have much there in the first half. He had basically he had several carries for, for no yards and doing a good job. Most of his yards has come from cuts, avoiding a tackle and cutting it to the outside. So Ankeny's doing a good job of getting to him at the point of attack where he's having to change. He can't get much of a head of steam on there. So he's he's earned those 43 yards on his own most of the night. Gain of two, second and eight for the Rams. Send the tight end in motion. They bring back Phillip underneath. He's hit up the line and then just keeps on churning for another four yards. Holy cow. Had some good push from one of his linemen, Carson Campisi. Campisi. Three and a pound tackle out there. When he gets to join the line, join the scrum, it's going to move in one direction, definitely towards the goal line. So the linemen do a good job of coming back and adding to that coming from behind and pushing that, that pile, adding extra yards for the running backs. Two receivers to the left for Moberly. And before... Someone moved. Someone moved, flag on the field, so I'm going to guess... Brandon snap, full start. Offense number two. False start on Southeast Polk, sends it back to the 25. 24. Next week, Southeast Polk will open their brand new stadium 
a home game against Cedar Rapids Prairie. And if you have not been out there, I know Ram fans, you, you have been waiting for a game there. It is beautiful on the southwest side of the new high school. Moberly, again, flag pattern to the right side against the man. Voss on defense, breaks up the pass that was intended for Jack Falloon. Had him covered out there. Really very tight coverage, and there's you know, is a very accurate pass. Still had it, got a hand on it. Couldn't hold it in for the touchdown, so good defensive effort there. Ball's at the 24. It'd be about a 40-yard field goal right now. Rams are going to keep the offense on the field. Fourth down. They need to get to the 17. He breaks Rams. his little... Rams on fourth down, Moberly with time, throws it near side, has Zelenovic in the end zone, incomplete, Com pass broken up by Jacob Moorfeld. Well, nice job there, hung with that he had it in the hands, he's in there, fought through it, knocked the ball out of his hands while he had it in the end zone. Once again, a very accurate pass by Moberly. Hit him in, hit him at the, in stride. Did he get his arm like right between his, maybe? Yep. Also, Sam Sandvig there. You're getting a look at Moorfeld and Sandvig as they come to was the sidelines. Is it Sandvig on the play or was it Moorfeld? I think it was Moorfeld. It looked like Moorfeld in there. They both were in that area. But good stop there on a the fourth down. Brings the Ankeny offense back on the field. Ball at the 24. One of their better starting field positions of this game. It's going to be Hankus, and he has just stood up by... Draven Woods. And we haven't seen Larmy much, and now Larmy comes back in. It was supposed to be kind of a double-headed offense with Larmy and Hankus. But it's been a lot of Larmy after last week and for the majority of this game. But now Daniel back onto the field. 340. Anderson with time. Throws a wobbler. Caw incomplete. And intended for Hankus. We have a penalty flag on the play back at Might the be line holding of on the offense. Surprising that they took the penalty because they declined it, it'd be a third and 12, so. Well, I think if you're Southeast Polk, you've seen Ankeny go for it multiple times on fourth down. So make them, make them get the yards, I guess. I, I don't know. Slant to Earl Meyer. It's caught, and he gets up. Woods and Chebahar there. And, yeah, Woods in, there. It, Woods in on the tackle of Earl Meyer. Gets maybe, maybe three. It's hard to gain many yards when you roll back in that traffic of this. It's a very fast moving, very active defense for the Rams. Hard to find much running room out there when you do get into their secondary. Anderson in an empty backfield. Looks to the left, throws, caught by Randolph. Again, same plays they ran. Anderson plays the great commission with Randolph. Open field tackling by their cornerbacks to get up there, giving them some cushion. There's a lot of room out there, so they're going to give them cushion to come underneath. That's always going to be open, but they close quickly to get a tackle, so they only gain a few yards after the catch. So now it brings up fourth and ten. Manny Gay, the tackle. Same play, but to the other side. Oh, and the punt, the snap goes over the head of the punter, back through the end zone. It's going to be over the head of Ryan Harrington, and that is going to be a safety. Oh, so the Rams are going to get the ball and two points. So it'll be 44-14. And this one, Harrington just had no chance. You start thinking about your blocking assignment, getting downfield there in the middle of the game. You get that snap hood a little more on it than you want. It sails on you. So the should result, you, you're going to punt the ball back in the safety 
from the 20 yard line. So it gives them, gonna end up giving the Rams very good field position. Dowling clings to a seven nothing lead on Valley in the fourth. Centennial rolling 42-0 against Ames. Cedar Falls has now taken a touchdown lead on Johnston, 28-21. Prairie in front of Senior, 14-7. Waukee still leads Northwest, 17-7. Here, it is 44-14. Dowling, they are going, this will be the last, looks like they're going to the fourth quarter over at Valley Stadium. You call, I forget, you call this a free kick? I guess they can put the tee in, but the ball's back at the 20 yard line. So Harrington will kick it. And Southeast Polk takes it at the 40, up to the 45. That looked like Holden Hansen. Ezekiel Pink's there, got a hand on. Oh, Sam Zelenich, okay. sorry. Right down the line, number 51, Manning Allen. Manning Allen, the tackle for, for Ankeny. Yep, yep. Connor Moberly, future Cyclone. <laughs> he, is, he is something to watch. You think of the quarterbacks. Prior to Moberly, Jackson Daly, who went down to Arkansas State. Then he had Josiah Cole. It's been some good quarterbacks. Not quite. We're not going to go all the way back to Kyle Orton, but, you know. Mr. Boilermaker. And it's a handoff and a gain of a couple. Landon Vanderwerf, the junior. Sandvig up there tripped him up. Kinnick kept it down to a flight as well. Starcevich. Good quarterback there. Let's not forget... Brad Zelenovich was a good quarterback, too, in his own right. He was. Played for the Storm. Played for the Storm. Class of 2000. Second and five for the Rams. 144 to play here, third quarter. Trips to the near side. Vanderwerf gets the call, and he'll be stopped short of the first down. Good diving tackle. Vanderwerf on the carry. Sam Sandvig. Good. You always see Wernow in the backfield somewhere around the ball. He's got a good nose for the ball. Four yard gain, third and one. Third and short. I will not see the quarterback sneak here. Rams have gone under center, but not on this play. They go Vanderwerf up the middle. He's met at the line of scrimmage, but I don't think it's going to be enough stopping by Kingston Upabi. Upabi made a nice, nice tackle there, but not before they got the first down. I'm surprised to see Moberly in the game here late in the third quarter, still running the basically the first team offense. Well, the touchdown kind of changed maybe the thinking of the Rams. Moberly throws back to the right side, and it's too far for Cooper Butel. Incomplete. Kinnick Voss on coverage. Tighter coverage in the secondary on these receivers. They aren't getting as open there where... Really, the only thing for Mobley to do is actually throw it out in front of them, hoping they can catch it, or it's going to go incomplete. So they tighten the coverage. One thing that Ankeny did last week, and I was impressed with, that they made adjustments in their secondary where they're letting a lot of the receivers running free, tighten it down, change their zone reads, their man to man reads, uh, tightening up the coverage quite a bit. Upabi just kind of limped off to the bench and will have a seat at the 40. Handoff, new running back for Southeast Polk. That's Jace Baxter and Connor Kaiser. The tackle. Number 36, Jace Baxter. Minnesota, so third and, and, and that is going to end our third quarter. 44-14, the Hawks lead 
the quarter, 7-2, but trailing the game 44-14. The fourth when we return here on CISN. National sales event is going on all month long at Diamond Automotive Knoxville. New Silverado 1500 Turbo Max with up to $9,000 off MSRP. Must trade 09 or newer. Must own or lease 09 or newer Chevrolet. New Sierra 1500s with 2.9% for 60 months. Available in all trucks. New Jeep Gladiator with up to $7,000 off MSRP. And new Ram 1500s with up to $11,000 off MSRP. Every vehicle is tagged with one low price at Diamond Automotive Knoxville. DiamondAuto.com. Let's face it, it's Iowa and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are going to get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same day AC service appointments at the ready. We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west. Southeast Polk, number one, number two, number three, depending on the poll that you look at. The other one that might be number one is the Dowling Catholic Maroons, and they just made an interception and are about to take it back to the house. Huge turnover for the Maroons as that's under seven minutes to play. Just happened to be dialing up. Our other CISN game tonight here. It's 44-14 as we begin quarter number four. Moberly to go to work. Throws across the middle and it's incomplete. His intended receiver was Cameron Hall. Hall puts his hands up looking for a little uh, little sympathy from the officials. Same Z on the coverage. Undercut it. Might have got a hand on it. Tip the ball so he brings up for the They'll bring out the punt unit, which we've not have seen much. So I think they've only punted once. The entire night, which is early in the first quarter. The punter, who we've hardly identified, Hunter Chanthapon, but here's the thing, Hunter's been so busy kicking extra points tonight. It's a kick, nice line drive, he's gonna bounce at the five and get to the goal line. Oh, they're going to say it's down at the one. Foot line. He Huge was defense, uh, special teams play. Spencer Olson. Oh, my. <laughs> Just when you think things couldn't get worse for the Hawks. Look at this pin. Now this is when you really need your offensive line to get a push because you're just trying to get out of the shadow there if you can get up off tackle if they're going to do something with, with Larmy there. Yeah, that was Olson the whole time. Oh, there's the ball at the one. Starting offense for the Hawks come out. Quarterback sneak here, Tim. I think he's back in the shotgun, so what you want to do is you want to make sure that the running back gets some positive yards. Before the snap, we have a whistle. If it is against Ankeny, it's not more than a three quarters, more than a third of a yard. It's half the distance. But it's against Southeast Pope. Yeah, the defense encroach, that's going to help them out quite a bit. What if it changed the play call? Because it looks like you're going to do a, a short rollout to the right to find something deep out there as they got split wide to the right. 44 14. Southeast Pope. Larmy gets the handoff and just falls forward for a yard near the five and tackle. For Southeast Polk is Kale Winjet. He lost a couple yards there. Wanted to go back to that design pass play. They got to the wide side of the field to the right would be open if they could do a crossing route. Anderson with time throws caught far sideline. That's Mason Randolph. He's out of bounds. The tackle out there, I can't tell who did the tackle, if it was Hills or, or Gabe, but came down awkwardly when he on the tackle. Brody on Brandt the... is down for Southeast Polk. Is he the one that made the tackle, maybe? Yeah, he's the one who made the tackle on that play. Steve's giving me the yup. Yep. Yeah, so he, he was came... watching the play, I wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody has to watch the game. It's a long oh, ways from my, from my eyes to see out there. I just 
kind of I could tell it's black and white and gold. I, I convinced him to do this so he, I could actually watch. You know, I needed somebody to actually watch the game. Yeah, because that's the last thing I did. There's a look at the moon. You seen the moon this week? Yes. It's been incredible. The blue moon. Doesn't mean it's blue in color. It just means it's the second moon. And it's now we're getting smaller, right? So the peak was we're, Wednesday night, I think. It was, it was Wednesday night. Yes. Will not happen again till 2038. 2038. Okay. It's not that far away. We still be here? Uh, we might still. <laughs> Some games it feels like we're going to be here for 15 more years, but running clock was what we were destined for out of the locker room. It was a 35 point lead for Southeast Pope. Ankeny just trying to find some offense here. They've been able to squeak out 172 yards total offense, 27 rushing, 145 passing. But Polk has done it all in the air, 258. And they counter near and past the first down. Kaiser on the Wildcat. Something we saw last week where he scored a touchdown off the Wildcat coming in. Still seeing a number of starters out there for the, the Rams on defense. 10.35 to play. Hand off Larmy, and he gets to the outside. And Caleb Chebahar. If you had to pick a if you had to pick a defensive player of the game for Southeast Polk, I mean it's gonna be kinda hard to go against Draven Woods or Chebahar, right? The front six, maybe, I would go with. You know, that they're they really are a unit out there playing extremely well. Anderson throws across the middle, caught by Akers, and he is just ripped down like a rag doll. I have seen Draven Woods have impact out there, tip a pass, almost intercepted, had a sack. Chebihar, of course, you know, monster linebacker playing well. I've seen Nave from his safety position making a number of plays blitzing and also on coverage. So um, those three have really been the standouts on that the Southeast Polk defense. Trey lost the tackle plus a penalty of five. So now what a drive that started back at your own one is up to the 30-yard line. For Ankeny, first and 10, 9.55 to play. Larmy goes in, then out for a minute. Trey, Larry, Trey and Nave again. Mullis got a bit of a block out there, just like spring him, just give him a little sliver of, of room there. Larmy does a good job of darting and then cutting out field, as we mentioned before. So they get that offensive line could get some motion going to get the running game going. Larmy next to Anderson in there for blocking purposes. Anderson throws far sideline, has a man, and penalty flag comes in. Intended receiver, I think, was Randolph. And I think it's going to be a combo, combo platter. Peshik is probably going to get called for the pass interference here. I think he never turned around and ran with the receiver. Yep, I think he's, he's just never turned around to defend, so I think he got pushed the receiver down, so... That's a two big penalties here. Three penalties on this drive so far. They started with the, with the encroachment early on, so they uh, keeps the drive alive. Be good to see this offense, how they came out in the beginning of the, the first, the second half there, scored right away. If they could do something positive here to work on into next week. Ball at the 47. Larmy hit about midfield and gets into Literally Southeast Brady. Polk territory. Chebahar again there for the tackle. Now, I want to go back to something you said here, Tim. I mean, you were, you were saying earlier about the youth of this Ankeny team. Is that part of the reason we're seeing everybody still out here that's a starter for Ankeny? I think so. They, they need game experience. I think what you're looking at is, you know, and they're playing a really good team. This is still, their their starters are still out there. They're making some movement, gain some confidence. You know, it's that repetition of live action where the bullets are flying. Uh, that's that's going to be beneficial. I still think this Ankeny Hog team but we get to week nine is in the playoff hunt. I think they're, they're a quality team. They got some good athletes out there. They ran into a juggernaut tonight, so. Chebahar goes down at the 42 and quickly draws a couple of coaches for his attention. We'll step away for a quick 30 second break here at C on CISN at Aikney Stadium. 
Let's face it, it's Iowa and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are going to get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same day AC service appointments at the ready. We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, Westside Auto Pros. Chebahar to the sidelines. Hawks with the football. Second and five from the 48. Anderson to throw. Down the near sideline. Randolph is there. He is shoved. <laughs> The official had to throw it, take his hat out because the offensive player went out of bounds. Jeff Bauer is right there as Manny Gay on coverage. <laughs> hey, Randolph had his, his jersey was stretched a little bit. Coaches are wondering what uh, the call was not called. Third and five, Larmy gets it through the middle and then he picks up a first down. Good form tackle by Winjet. Spence is in there, you know, good downfield blocks, bring in Larmy, he's got to come off the field and take a breather. Also good blocking by the tight end, doesn't catch any passes here tonight, but Summerfield has done a nice job of blocking in there on the interior lineman. Hankus in at the running back position, but he's there for blocking now. Anderson steps under pressure, throws to the backside, and has a man in the wide open, the end zone, it's caught for an eighth, and he touchdown, Evan Erlmeyer, 40 yard strike. <laughs> Evan Ermile, they call him the spark plug, and there he did went downfield. Give credit to Anderson, scrambling, scrambling, saw them, and didn't underthrow it. Threw it, put some air underneath that, letting Ermile come underneath, catch it for a touchdown. So their second touchdown of the half. Again, just like I'm supposed to catch that. Nice play, Evan. Evan Ermile and Luke Anderson were youth sports teammates for a number of years as Luke Anderson's dad was their coach on some of those efforts, so. False start on the kicking team, so the Hawks will get to practice. These are the little mistakes that coach is talking about that we can't do, that they make the, the blunders. You know, we had some special team errors here. These are things they can clear up. I think they are gonna watch this on film again. I say film, it's, you know, it's all digital, but it's. It's on their iPads. It's on their phones before they get into their cars. Harrington to kick now a 25-yard extra point, and he hits it. 44-21. 8.28 to play here from Ankeny Stadium. You're watching high school football on the Central Iowa Sports Network. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Spring will be here soon, and our selection of patio furniture is fantastic, but it won't be that way forever. If you want to get furniture for your deck this summer, come see us now. All the best brands and the best selection. And if you want a special order for this summer, we still have time to do that. Come see us now. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Over 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. Waukee Chevy. Hawks get their third touchdown, second of the half. They lead the second half, 14-2. Trail in the game, 44-21. Coach Jeff, I'm just doing what Coach Bauer said, Tim. <laughs> Win the half. Harrington's kick is going to be taken by Robbins at the five. Comes in, cuts across the middle, gets to the right hash, and he's got one man to beat. Makes the spin in. The kicker misses one of those tackles, and it's all the way up to the 40 or 35 yard line before, before Manning Allen makes the tackle. What a return. There's a pretty good hole in the middle there that I think the officials are watching the some of the other blocking, but they might have might have missed. But good return there to hang with it. See if Moberly comes back out here in the with eight minutes to go in the game, or if we're going to see the backup. Jeff says 60 yard return on that because he took it at the five. That's right. So now Southeast Polk. Let's see. They're bringing out Connor Moberly still. I mean. 
I guess you could use the same argument for Southeast Polk, Tim. They need the reps, too. I'm having a hard time with that. A couple of different players I see in motion is Edison Sama. They go back underneath on a run play. And the handoff was to Jace Baxter. All right, Steve, we're going to have our work cut out for us. We've got a whole bunch of new guys. We're going to try to get them all in here. Looks like I see... I see Braxton Bergman in there on the line. Moberly again. Baxter next to him. Let's see. I see Braden Harmon still out there for for Southeast Polk screen. They go back shoulder and. That is going to be interference because I don't think the Ankeny player had ever turned around, and he didn't. Intended. I think they were going for Zelenovich again. Yep, he was open on the uh, on the far play. Here's the play again. Morbley really took a pretty good shot there getting the ball off. That's why you... That's why I was hesitant to say why you want to keep the starters out there because you just, as you're trying to make a play, you just you don't know. Now you're looking at getting your backups used to your starting quarterback and there's some timing issue because you want to create some more depth because they want to go deep into the uh, into the playoffs, get back to the Uni Dome. So that's that's their ultimate goal. Austin Oliver, we have not forgotten about you. I'm sorry, we just get so wrapped up in a couple things. We'll check in with you here in a minute. Bring you into this contest as. Zelenovich goes in motion, handoff underneath to Vanderwerf. All right, Austin, what are you seeing down there in this uh, from your vantage point? Well, I was just going to echo what Tim had said earlier. Um, you know, that's a young team on the Ankeny side. Uh, that uh, last drive with the uh, uh, it was up against Polo, Southeast Polk's number one defense, it looked like for the most part. So that was uh, good to see as well. Um, I think that uh, that film session with uh, the Ankeny defense is going to be where they're going to really be kicking themselves on this game because it, uh, it, uh, that's where it got away from them. So uh, tough team, though, Southeast Polk for sure, but uh, some things to build on for Ankeny as well. Moberly to throw to the back of the end zone. He's got a guy. It's caught, and it's in the end zone for a touchdown. Southeast Polk again. They go Carson down, Robbins, 13-yard score on the fade to the back corner. That fade to the to the outside corner, I think like Mobley was out there, had great coverage on there, had his hands up, but that's is just a perfect pass, dropping it in the bucket. Came Why was that not catch. interference? Did he not turn? I didn't see him turn. I'm speechless. I'm looking at the moon. <laughs> Extra points, good. 51, 21, 642 to play here on CISN. Let's face it, it's Iowa and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are going to get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same day AC service appointments at the ready. We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, Westside Auto Pros. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Michigan, Michigan State leads Central Michigan 31-7. If that game was flipped, we were supposed to tell Coach Bauer. And if they were at Michigan State playing Central Michigan. And the reason to bring that up is that's where Jace Bauer plays. Jeff Bauer's son and uh, getting a chance to play there for. Is that the transfer? That is the uh, Bert Emanuel. I think that's the kid from Texas yeah. that is the, is the last year starter. So Jace was in the mix for that starting job. Played some last year. Short kick <laughs> taken by Randolph. What do you see? Uh, I think coach is expressing to him the 
forward progress of some of the kicking team being a little bit past the ball because the, the kicker slows up right before he kicks it. I think the guys are getting across the line, so I think he was calling it to the attention of the far side official not calling it. So, Well, and a couple of those coaches are known to express opinions, and that's what they're there to do, yeah. work, watch all parts of the game. Luke Anderson comes back out, 640. Down by 30, 51-21. Larmy to get the handoff, and then he has just stood up right away. Hand off to Larmy. Noah Frank, the tackle. On the end, Noah Frank Dowling has nine. defeated Valley tonight, 14 0. Anderson. Fakes, escapes one. Can he escape the second? He's intercepted. He is intercepted. It's picked off by Caden Hills on the far sideline. Stepped right in front of that pass that was intended for, I believe, Devin Akers. Anderson took a pretty good hit from David Woods, was chasing him down on the back side there, and he hit it, getting up a little slow there. Might just, have got the wind knocked out of him. Just jumped the route. Yeah, he was a little slow. To, he's still down. Anderson down for an extended time there. Now laying on the turf. He had been sitting up. Jet Each is listed as the uh, backup quarterback. Could also see Cale Roush, the sophomore. Those two listed in behind. Jet is the holder on extra points and field goals. Southeast Polk next week host Prairie. Then they are hosting Centennial. Then they travel to Sioux City East. Then Johnston at home at Waukee. Host Alley Catholic and host Des Moines Lincoln to end the season. Ankeny Hawks will play somewhere other than Ankeny Stadium next week when they go to Dowling. It'll be Dowling's home opener, even though Dowling's playing tonight, played tonight at Ankeny Stadium. Then Johnston at Iowa City West, home with Prairie. Iowa City Liberty at Valley, and then home to end the season with Cedar Rapids, Washington. As Anderson is up, walking on his own power. Chris of passing, 21 of 29 for 192. Uh, looks like he's got you know three TDs. Um, the last one there, unfortunately, was if I get two picks for tonight, but hung it in there, Yeoman's effort by the junior. Learning a lot by playing these games. He's done a, did a great job, only his second start for this offense. New quarterback for Southeast Polk, Holden Hansen will play. Yeah, I didn't even put Hanson on here because you didn't think you'd see him, but Moberly, no, Moberly's night is done. 16 to 25 passing for 269. Top targets, Robbins, seven catches, 127. Zelenovich, eight catches, 131. You know, Moberly had to run a little bit last week against Valley, but tonight didn't have to run it but twice. And I, one of them was a touchdown. Hanson throws near sideline, back of the end zone, or back of the five. Incomplete intended for Seneca Molstry. Hit on his hands there for a minute. And Jacob Moorefeld on coverage. Those corners like Moorefield and, and Voss and that they're out there on the island, you know, handling these this deep receiving core for Southeast. Polk did a nice job there, breaking it up, getting in front of it, preventing a touchdown. 
Hawk faithful still in attendance. Southeast Pokes fans starting to trickle out just a little bit. 6.04 to play. 51-21. And boy, good second and third effort there by Jace Baxter. Kaiser Ridge on his back holding on. So is Andrew Hazi, who we've seen tonight come on and off the field. Getting some more playing time. He's been out. He had that collarbone injury. Coming back, getting back in more into playing shape. You know, their coach says he's going to use him sparingly, but it's good to see him on the back on the field again. We're going to need him next week against Dowling, too. Schedule doesn't not get any easier for the Hawks. Hansen, the quarterback keeper. Samuel Z there first. And also. Looks like Kaiser shot there caused him to spin, avoid one tackle only to run into another, into, into Z. Under five to play. Fourth and 10. Rams go for it on fourth down. Hansen calls for it, rolls out, steps up, throws. Caught at the 20. He's going to have. He is going to be. He gets enough for the first down, but it's a hold on mm -hmm. Southeast Polk. They tried the little mini rollout out there with the rush. Oh, personal foul, face mask. I thought he was given the hold sign. Personal foul and Sam Sandvig there on coverage. He was holding his face mask. So now if you're poke and you go all the way back to make it fourth and it's going all the way to the 45. Do you still go for it or do you punt it? Well, it's going to be the punt team. Yeah. Yep. Good to see the Yankee students mostly sticking around, the older ones. Football fans and family here right underneath us. Chant the Fawn on to kick. Punt it away for the Rams. Short kick. Oh, it goes off of Voss, I think, and I think the Rams have it back. That pinged off a of Kinnick. And a penalty flag comes in I think a after the play. Unsportsmanlike, I think, is going to cause after the, the play was done. I think taunting after the recovery of the fumble, possibly the call, which would be of the 15-yard variety. After the play is over, unsportsmanlike conduct. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 81, 59 Let's take a look at the uh, play again. Hangs off the helmet and then it must have been a, sh a forearm on the shove and the handoff goes again. I think that was Baxter. Baxter so tonight, as we get ready, we will in the post game. We will talk to a couple of the Southeast Polk players. Let's see. Trying to look up Moberly's stat line. Five-yard touchdown run. And then he's had a whole lot of passing touchdowns. <laughs> it's a great game for Connor Moberly. He did. And he put the ball on the money. I mean, this is one of the better passing I've seen out there. Baxter running still inside the 25, down to the 20. Approach three minutes to play. When you watch these games, when the, when the Division I athlete comes across, you watch them play, you can really tell the difference. 
their head above how they play. So yeah, Moberly offensively has done a good job. It's, I'm having a little bit more difficult time with the, the defense if you want to call someone out there. Titans. Of course, Linovich is the other one that had a really a great game receiving. Titan Westemeyer with the catch. Again, Baxter, he's inside the 20, just bowls his way through inside the five before Makai Johnson Gary. makes the tackle. Penalty, on the play. Penalty flag. Second tier players, you know, coming in, the backups coming in, getting out there, getting some playing time, but also reaching. You don't have your timing down, you get out there, you don't get in front of the block there, you get your hands out there and you try to grab or to, to shove somebody. So usually that's where the holding calls uh, come out. So backs them up again, gives his defense a chance to get a breather there on the first and 20. Hawks now getting some extra guys in for their first game experience of the season. Same with the Rams as they go Luke Mash as a helmet goes flying. Two are going to carry for the Rams. Edison Sama has to run off. That's uh, Makai Johnson who made the tackle. They got a new offensive tackle, Lucas Weber for Southeast Polk. 6'3", 3'10". It's a lot of tackle for that defensive end to handle. Hanson. Actually, that's not Hanson now. A handoff. Good tackle there by Dalton. Jesse Schumacher, the carry. And Nolan Dalton made this, the tackle. As we're under two minutes to play. Third and 11. I would imagine this is... They don't make it here, they could try for the kick, but this is a big, that's to see a defensive stop for the Hawks here on a third and 11, as the play clock gets down under 10. Minute 30 to play in the game. Hacks, or Hanson, handoff Baxter, inside the 10, five and into the end zone. We just way up the middle, bounce cut back in. Open up for him to take a route to the end zone, 21 yards. Great play there by Jace Baxter, the senior, 5'9", 185, going, I want, I'd like my opportunity too. That was pretty speedy. It was. Low snap, the kick is up, and it is good. We'll see if Luke Anderson comes back on the field. I know he walked off the last time. This is a, a score after that interception, so we'll see if he's, how he's feeling, if he's moving around, or if they're going to you know, go back, uh, see a different quarterback come back out here, take the last series for the minute 23 to go. We will have a post game, Southeast Poke fans, if you want to stick around and see... Hear from a couple of your players. We will have those in the post game. Our next broadcast is next week. Cedar Falls and Centennial. Both of those teams were winning at last check. I think Centennial has now gone final, 42-6. And Cedar Falls leads Johnston, 35-21. The issue sometimes when you get a, a game like this is uh, the special teams guys have to stay engaged because occasionally they have to go back out and kick. Yeah, they get used to coming in there on the offensive defensive series and they find themselves also have special team duties, so they find themselves playing quite a bit and knowing their assignments. A lot of long faces there on that Hawks sideline as you look. Chantafon puts it in the air and it's taken. Fair catch. Called for and made. It looks like a lot of the starting off, and, or the. Uh, there was uh, Randolph. 58 21. Southeast Polk. 123 to play. 
Ball's run at the 20-yard line versus Ben Ankeny. We are going to see Andrew Brandhorst come in as a wide receiver. Jet each at quarterback. Hankus is his running back. They give it to Hankus, who gets around the right side, gets up near the 30. Well, nice four. run there. Good blocking out to the point of that. Good run by Brody Brand the tackle. Brady Brand. That's a hot first down. Again, Hankus. And he has stood up. I think one of the numbers I saw briefly in there was Caden Kane. And also Emmett Bartels. He'll be content to run, run the ball here. Each hands off. It was Reagan. I think it was Hankus again. It was Hankus, yep, yep. And it was Delvis Kuti. They can run one more play. Hawks do not have to take the snap, and I'm not sure they will. Nine seconds. Here for the side, let's let the clock run out. 58-21 is the end of this game. That's how it's going to end. Southeast Polk will improve to 2-0. and Ankeny will fall to 1-1. One and one. The two teams will shake hands. Both get on buses and head back home. Our pregame, our postgame show continues as we have a couple of inter interviews with Southeast Polk. We'll give you the rundown of some half time or full game statistics. Boy, you think I haven't done this all night. <laughs> we'll wrap up the other scores and preview quickly next week and the rest of your weekend. Ankeny scored first. They won some parts of the second half, but end up falling tonight. 58 21, Southeast Polk. Rolling in this one. Our post game show will begin shortly here on the Central Iowa Sports Network. New trucks are arriving daily during Schottenkirk Chevy's truckload kickoff event. Over 1,200 vehicles. WaukeeChevy.com. Inventory changes hourly. Don't see exactly what you want? Build, price, and order direct from the factory. To better serve you, we've doubled the size of our service department. We need more team members. Go to WaukeeChevy.com to see our job openings. The truckload kickoff event. Find new roads to Schottenkirk Waukee Chevy. WaukeeChevy.com. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Spring will be here soon, and our selection of patio furniture is fantastic. But it won't be that way forever. If you want to get furniture for your deck this summer, come see us now. All the best brands and the best selection. And if you want a special order for this summer, we still have time to do that. Come see us now. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Southeast Polk wins 58-21. We go down to Austin Oliver. Coach, you there? Okay, there we go. Coach, uh, dominant win. Um, Got to feel really good about uh, what you did tonight. Let's uh, hear what, you, what your thoughts are. Yeah, you know, we're looking for that week one to week two improvement like everybody. And, you know, started slow, of course, but, uh, you know, we're able to create some matchups uh, there in the second quarter and then uh, kind of got some space before half. Yeah, I just got that offense rolling, defense got rolling, got a little bit of everything. Uh, good game from you guys for sure. Yeah, you know, we had them field position plus field position backed up and, you know, got got three, some three and outs and had short field, so that always helps. But, uh, yeah, it was a good team win. You know, they're a good team. Uh, they got a lot of pieces there. So, uh, you know, we're fortunate to, to get a, a win on the road. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, well, Austin, you have a couple more there yep, with you. A couple get, of these uh, guys. Uh, big night. Let me give you the quick uh, numbers on Moberly. Tonight he goes passing 16 to 26 for a total of 269 passing. Go ahead. All right, uh, Connor, I'm here with Connor Mobley. Uh, stats tonight 16 to 26, 269 yards, uh, four touchdowns, a five yard run as well. Talk to me about that uh, stat line. Uh, you know, it was just a great, great offensive performance by everybody. The O line, the wide receivers, they were just making plays for me, so it helped me out a lot. Yeah, it's uh, pinpoint accuracy with you uh, pretty much all game. Lovely, uh, lovely to see you play tonight. 
Yeah, yeah, appreciate that. All right. We got uh, Devin Woods here. Who was everywhere, Austin. That guy he was incredible. Uh, the guys upstairs are saying you were everywhere here. We got a camera over here, too. So talk to me a little bit about the uh, – obviously gave up that first uh, drive uh, yeah. touchdown, and then uh, you guys kind of locked it down. Gave up a little bit in the second half there, but talk to me a little bit about the defense tonight. Yeah, we settled in. Our linebackers got us lined up. We had a great week of preparation. We knew it was coming. A little shaky the first drive, but it settled in. Yeah, talk to me a little bit about that preparation. What were you guys prepared for? Um, obviously, uh, you got some good film um, off of that Centennial uh, Hawk game last week. Uh, what, were you, what was kind of that game plan going into it? That scout team, our scout team does a great job of giving us looks of what they're going to run and film every night, half hour every night. Very good. Uh, you're all over the field. Uh, great game there for you, buddy. Thank you. All right. That's it. All right, Austin Oliver, thank you. Great job tonight down on our sideline as the high big moon is watching. They saw Southeast Polk roll 403 yards of total offense, 259 for Ankeny. Akers was able to get seven catches for 106 yards, five for Ermeyer and 55 yards. Tonight passing, uh, Luke Anderson, 21 of 29, but it was really the rushing that struggled tonight, Tim, 67 yards, and a lot of that came early. Yeah, I did. They were at, they had a minus five yards rushing there at the end of you know end of the first quarter. I think you just never got that established. It's a very very good defensive line that just that it's young. They're trying to get their their system out out there. So and that then led to the passing game just not being as sharp. Even though they, they had several touchdown passes, Anderson hung in there to throw two more here in the second half. But yeah, the running game just never got going until probably late in the fourth quarter. Next week, we will have Centennial and Cedar Falls. Ankeny goes on the road to Dowling. Southeast Polk opens up their new stadium with Cedar Rapids Prairie. For the entire crew here at CISN, thank you so very much for watching tonight. Polk rolls 58-21. So long tonight from Ankeny Stadium.